Welcome to Friday Live. Um, it's nearly the end of April. Um, another month passes by. It's nice and wet outside, even better. Um, so joined today by Beth Roberts, who um, some of you may know from your Instagram page yep. and your your relatively new journey in golf. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, should be a really fun one today in terms of you know, you've been playing just under a year. Yeah. Um, and I think what you're doing in terms of that. Tech, uh, tech hitch. <laughs> Thank you. Hopefully that it was a moment ago. <laughs> um, so uh, I don't know whether anyone heard any of that, but um, here with Beth, who's relatively new into golf, been playing the last year or so, um, and it's all her boyfriend's f uh, fault. And it is. Uh, yeah, I blame and, him. Yeah. <laughs> And, and I think really interesting to see from, from our point of view, fitting someone like yourself, who's kind of really, you know, your golf's really getting a bit of momentum. Um, so you look like you're playing quite a lot. Yeah, probably <laughs> yeah. too much. Um, you can tell from the tan, you know, you've <laughs> been sunny out there. Um, but I think really where, where you're at and how, how your game's kind of accelerating and improving and how from the, the set you've got now, uh, which I think you said you won on a comp. Yeah, um, won them on an Instagram to, competition. To how that can then help you take your game kind of through, develop through. So it'll be yeah. a really interesting session today. So, Definitely, I'm excited. Um, and other than the bits that I've just said, anything in particular that uh, about kind of what you've been, because you're doing a lot to champion ladies golf for the moment yeah, as well. Yeah, definitely. Just trying to get more women involved mm. um, just to give it a go because mm. it's a load of fun. And that's pretty much my passion through doing all of this really and it's hard yeah it's, it is so hard. i think that's, that's part of the fun isn't it it's that yeah. chance that that one that shot that you hit and it doesn't yeah. matter what level you are you get a shot that you hit and you go when you hit that's a good one as, that's as like the, the pros we proud of that. that's just what keeps you going uh, yeah you keeps, want to keep normally doing 18th that. hole yeah. right at the end <laughs> the given, last given shot up hope. yeah, yeah. And you're like oh yeah and then that's what keeps you coming back then <laughs> so i'm gonna i've done a little bit of measuring of your set i'm gonna go yep. through the irons here so i guess you know talking through your game generally um, any bits of the bag that you've always been more comfortable with? More um, comfortable. So to be honest, do you know what happens is I start, started off, I was loved my driver, mm. loved my hybrids and my woods. Okay. And then I started having lessons more with my irons. Yep. Got way more confident with those. Yep. And then it kind of all flipped on its head. And yeah, now okay. I'm kind of going back again. So I'm getting confident again with my driver and my hybrid. So I'd say they're probably my best clubs. And then... Got it. My irons are also fine. And then these woods are just <laughs> <laughs> giving me a ne huge headache. Nemesis, right, <laughs> yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it is funny how you say so you do work one bit of the bag and you'll often find the kind of ebbs and flows is yeah. that, I mean, rarely, rarely does golf ever give you a round where everything falls into place. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, you tend to find a one bit will go well and then it'll shift, and it'll shift back to another and um, the, the general frustration of the game. Um, so from a swing point of view, is there anything specifically that you've been working on more recently or is there a general trend of things from a technique point of view that you, you would go back to as a kind of key? Um, to be honest, I do try and because I am still new, it's just consistent ball striking for me is probably mm. the main thing. So yep. obviously my swing is important, but just getting that um, consistent striking going every single time, that's kind of what I work on when I'm at the range. So yep. that's the main thing for me. But yeah, I'm, I have been trying to get more of my body working when I'm swinging because I was using quite a lot of my arms. Okay. And I feel like, yeah, it wasn't working the best. So yeah, get, getting my body moving a yeah. lot more. Got it. And naturally right-handed? Yeah. Any other sports you've done a lot of in particular? A lot of. Or more maybe. of. <laughs> more of back in the day. Netball, probably not really mm. any. Sort of never played hockey really, and I know okay. a lot of people say that kind of. It's, thing, kind of, yeah, it's sort of good bad. and bad, and that there are elements of it just from general kind of stick and ball and striking yeah. and a similar kind of base action. Are good, but then there are things now with where hockey is now versus where it was when I played 23 years ago, <laughs> um, 25 years ago. Well, um, was it was more you're more upright and it was more golf swing like, whereas okay. now it's much more down, down and low. And being on a water base, the speed of it's more of a slap. So actually, hockey and golf aren't that conducive. Similar anymore. Um, mm. It's a bit like you know cricket and golf, you know, and tennis with a heavy, heavy kind of western, got heavy topspin. Yeah. Um, it doesn't work very well for golf. Okay. So there are elements of balance and I guess generating speed that yeah. those other kind of stick and ball sports help Pat. with. But there's a lot that technically now that we kind of understand more and specialise in different areas of sports that doesn't really cross pollinate that. Okay. Well. So the dial swing was interesting. Mm. Ah, uh, well, Nadal is, he, um, he is yeah. right-handed. 
Um, but he's, I'm pretty certain he's right-handed. Play, he plays golf right-handed, but yeah, he's yeah. more kind of predominant left. I think he's double-handed, backhanded, to, I think. Um, and it is interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, what, uh, whilst I do is I'm just going to say, measuring the specs on these to get that um, to the back of where we're going to get a base point from. Yeah. Um, feel free just to grab any club and have a loose nut whilst, uh, whilst I do these. Yeah. Where are actually playing most of your golf? Um, so back home in Swansea um, at my local club, Klein. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is, is a beautiful course. It is um, quite good for sort of like a new starter i would say yep. it's not too difficult and the ladies tees are quite good and also the club's very friendly so they're very open to having loads of new starters in which is why i started yeah. the help i'm helping them out with kind of their new to golf okay yeah women's practice which has been really good well it's and, and for, i mean to that end there's quite i guess as a a new a relative newcomer to golf gym it's a sport that historically hasn't hasn't been as open as it could have been over the years. Yeah. Um, how have you found that now? Is it, like, we'd all like to think it's better than it used to be. Oh, it's definitely mm. better than it used to be. I think it's even better now than when I first started. Mm. So when I first started 10 months ago, I think that's maybe when the push start kind of yeah. started to go. Um, and now it's the yeah, 10, 10 folds better, especially I think social media has had a lot to do with that as well. Just yeah. um, seeing a lot of, women start up kind of gives other women the confidence to try it for themselves so that's yep. kind of why I'm kind of pushing myself on socials so I think the more people see it the more women that see it the more likely they'll be to mm. give it a go yeah and I've certainly seen where I'm at St George's Hill my home club and we've seen there was, there's a um, couple of young young ladies come through playing and one been out of college and unless you get it's a vicious circle. If there yeah. aren't any, then no one really wants to come and join up. And yeah. play with teenage boys as a teenage girl. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but it, it, it kind of self-fulfills. And you get, start to get a little bit more of a vibe in. They've done like an academy membership where maybe wives or daughters or family members can kind of do some lessons and get some nine hole rounds and get the handicap to, yeah. or get their ability to a level that then is a sort of fast track into the club from that point. That's yeah. helped a lot. That, and I yeah, know quite a few good. clubs have done that. Yeah, I think those mm. are really good schemes just to kind of get the, the foot through the door. Because I know like the golf range, obviously you can go there mm. and it's decently cheap. You know, you just pay for the balls, you don't have to pay for clubs. Mm. Um, so I think that's a really good place to start. But I think clubs giving the initiative out there for women to just come and like have sort of like a taste a day mm. and get a real good feel for an actual golf course is a very good option for someone who's just starting out because yeah. you know you never know they might absolutely hate it <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. they don't well, want to pay that whole that, membership for a year they've uh, forked uh, out so much money and then they hate swing, it from that day one. one shot to make to kind of almost to show you i mean there was a a post i, I can't aware from but this chap had taken his girlfriend to the range and she i don't think she'd ever played with this she hit just lasered this shot really and the look on her face <laughs> was just like oh i now know why you play it. yeah and he, you could always hear him go Ah, didn't think it was going to go that well, but yeah. So, um, as you say, I think once you once you get someone get on the golf course and 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 say it's a hard sport, so actually getting getting the um, the platform to actually get into it. And I think consistently sticking to it as well, mm. because it's so difficult. Yeah. You've kind of got to put the work and effort in to kind of get the results. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's maybe what people find difficult is the actual time. It needs. And it's easy to forget if you're a seasoned player and have been playing. I've played no one 43, so I've played 34 years. Yeah. It's easy to forget actually how hard that first the hurdle first is, is, how big that first tee is. Yeah. I mean, it's bad enough for anyone to play a lot standing on the first tee in a comp. Um, but getting onto the course, it's, it's a big hurdle from yeah. a confidence point of view. Definitely. Um, do I hit from here? Yes, yeah. yeah. Just have, a, have a few hits and loosen up and yeah. I think as well, like I saw a podcast that was kind of like that um, gap between the golf range and 18 holes is so big. There's like no in yeah. between, yeah, yeah. which is true. That's so strange, right? I, I think we could do with more par three courses or yeah. nine hole courses, just to make it a bite size, like an hour and a bit. We've got one, I think, in our area and it is, you probably couldn't play it for most of the year. I think you could probably play it one month of the year because mm. it's just not maintained. And, yeah. and, and it's just, a lot of time yeah. you know, to commit to if you don't know if you don't know whether you're going to enjoy the next four hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Gosh, how is this going to go now? 
Oh, it'll it'll be good. It's, uh... <laughs> I'm assuming that strike has just helped. <laughs> Maybe. Still a bit look good, look good to me. And from a, a general kind of shot pattern that you see, whether it's, does it match practice and course in terms of shot patterns or would you tend to see one thing when you're practicing and one thing playing? Um, my alignment is really bad, so okay. I think on the course, I always feel like I'm aiming so much more left than what I am. And mm. then whoever I'm playing with will be like, you know you're aiming so far right right okay. now. <laughs> and then I've got to just kind of take a step back and be like, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> but um, I'd say I do tend to, my flight path is very right, but I don't know, it's changed recently to be yeah. left. It's so weird. Oh, the two come from the same thing. Yeah. It is if, you're, if your swing line is a little bit out to win. Yeah. This sounds like you're really hedging your bets, but it can, if you square the face up to that, it's going to go left. You yeah. leave it open, it's going to drift right. So the kind of the pull and the fade come from exactly the same swing pattern. Okay. It's just what you do with the club face at that point. So. Interesting. And the other thing with golf, it's very easy to judge yourself very harshly. Yeah. You know, it's, um, I feel like I'm a tough critic of myself, to be honest. And especially if I've had one bad hole, I really put myself yeah. down then and then I really struggle to kind of enjoy the rest of it. So you're a perfectionist then? <laughs> <Yeah>. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas if I've had a really good hole to start with, I'm like, oh, the day's gonna be great. Let's right. keep yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. And then it usually does go good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think it's just absolutely. all about, it's like a mental game as it's well, a, isn't It's it? a freedom, yeah. 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 It, it's, if, you can, if you can mentally kind of let go and just enjoy being out, this is normally the shot after a bad one yeah. <laughs> is a great one, because you just think, oh, I don't care anymore, don't care. And you free it up. Uh, definitely, yeah, a bit of mental freedom, definitely. Quick question from uh, Stu, who's watching. Thanks for tuning in, Stu. Uh, hi, guys. Does making an iron or driver flatter or upright affect the loft, and does it open or close the club face of a golf club? So uh, iron, it doesn't have to. Um, I, say, I was going to uh, say, this one's for you. I'll feel this, <laughs> this one here. For me. Um, <laughs> so uh, iron, yeah, no, um, you don't have to change the loft if you're changing the lie, because you're literally just bending. Um, the loft can stay the same if you're changing lie. You're literally just bending that up or down so you can go as long as you go in in line with the plane there there's no effect on loft um, with driver or woods um, most of the ones that have an adjustable hose actually this one doesn't but um, I'll, I'll grab it anyway um, because of the nature because you're not bending it up or down you can't actually bend this bit so where the cogs going because the shaft goes into the the sleeve at an angle as it rotates it changes the way the head sits so if you're going more loft it closes the face because it goes around the shaft a little bit. And if you're turning loft down, it opens it a little bit. So woods, adding loft will close the face, opening, um, uh, taking loft off will open the face a little bit, adding loft will close the face a little bit. Would you say is it more natural to be a little bit more aggressive and give it a hit, or more natural to play kind of, kind of smoother and play kind of back a little bit from full? Um, not, not, not necessarily better, but more natural. More. So I've always been better going down and hitting hitting something hard, whether so, so it's been you know, cricket or hockey or tennis or golf. I've always been better at like going just after it. Yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, same. To be honest, okay, yeah. if I just kind of go for it, those are usually my best shots. Right. Yeah. Whereas if I'm kind of like trying to, I think I think about it too much then, mm. and then that's yeah. when it kind of slices all. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. So I do just try and. And things we you will naturally be one or other. <laughs> yeah. Go back to it um, as we briefly said before we went on. It's about your your natural musculature and whether you're fast twitch and more kind of, um, I guess the muscles fire fast. Yeah. That suits going after it and committing to it. If you yeah. tend to be less fast twitch and more kind of control based as a as a musculature, then that's when kind of not going after it, playing quieter, that tends to be better. So you'll 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 find across whether you're whether it be throwing a ball, hitting a ball, um, you know, walking, talking, you'll have a natural temper. You'll either be on the quicker end of things or the or slower slow. end of things. Okay. And, and that generally gives a bit of a guide as to what your natural kind of um, I guess how you would naturally swing and how you'd naturally do pretty much anything. Okay. Mm. 
Mm, it's interesting to know. Yeah, I would say, well, I try then. Yeah. But then I do sometimes have days where I'm like, oh, I, will, I need to hold back. Yeah. And kind of maybe take it a bit slower, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, and then there'll, be, and there'll be days where there is sort of a little bit of a, of a, a tolerance for the, what a better phrase with it. And you know, the days that you're just swinging better, you can just let it go and, yeah, yeah. and free it up a bit more. And the days you've got to, you know, the time is a little bit off, then, then it, but it's just not, what you don't want to do is try to over control it. It's kind of rain it back like 5%, 5%, 5% rather than you try and, like for me, if I try to take too much off it, I'll quit on it and leave it short right. Whereas I'm much better going after it and committing through it. Yeah, so, I have found yeah. that actually, mm. that if I do hold back a bit, that's when I, that is when I mess up more. Okay. Yeah. Than when I actually just commit to the shot and go for it. Yeah. Well, to give it a whack then is the, just, uh, yeah, basically. <laughs> just, Do you play a particular ball or prefer a particular ball when you play? At the moment, not really. I'm mm -hmm. just kind of whatever's there. White will, round one. I will use, yeah, yeah, exactly. Most of them end up in the bushes or in trees. <laughs> so <laughs> I think um, I'll just go with whatever's okay. going. And do you prefer, not that it has a relevance to next year, this is more a feel, but do you prefer, have a preference for a softer or firmer feeling ball? Or nope. don't know yet? Again, yeah, yeah. none, anything at the minute, but yep. I know that people say maybe commit to kind of one ball and Yeah, stick an to consistent it. one, yeah, more for the short game because then okay. at least um, chipping and putting, the, the reaction off the face is going to be consistent so you can start to gauge distance control. Yeah. Um, you know, certainly how much the ball is going to run out when you're chipping. That uh, definitely that, makes that a lot of sense. That then definitely kind of ties up the short game a little bit more. Okay. So it doesn't necessarily have to be technically the best ball for you. Yeah. But if you're, you, you'll, it'll help tune in your, your kind of feel and your distance control of the short game. Okay, mm. no, that's interesting. So maybe I should be good. Yeah, I probably should do that. Maybe test them out and see which one I am. Yeah, we can have a little bit of a look at you know, certain ball types today and see whether there's... Oh, I can see you've got a few. Yeah, I've got a few more on the, on the back here as well. So, you know, there are kind of principles that a softer core, um, in theory, is optimised for a kind of a lower club speed, you know, something like a Pro V1 is geared to the core's design to optimise driver performance at the top end. Okay. It still works for a lot of golfers, um, but you're prioritising short game spin and control with a softer cover versus then a more kind of distance ball, side spin a little bit less, so it's a bit straighter on the long game. Okay. But then it spins less with the short game, so the priority is more straightness okay. versus short game control. So. Very interesting. And it costs a lot less as well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. None of you look for the long time. It's five or a ball. <laughs> but, yeah, a five or a ball. That's what I mean at the minute. That's why it's like whatever's going because yeah. they go in the bushes, they yeah. go in the ferns, and yeah, I don't want to be forking out like forty pound a round just for balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Simon, just following on uh, with uh, Stu asking. So flattening the lie of an iron does not open the face. If so, why does flattening the light start the ball more right of target? Uh, it's gearing. So um, as it's all relative. So doing that on its own doesn't change it. Um, the lie is relative to the person who's swinging it and what neutral is from that point. So if you play flatter, if you err flatter than neutral in terms of lie relative to your setup, then essentially the loft, the more loft it is, the more it changes the gearing on the shot shape. So if you, if you go lots of loft and go really upright, then, then the, the face really, it starts to, lots of loft, it starts to aim a little bit left. That's why ball above your feet goes left, because the face is aiming left. But changing the light on its own doesn't change face angle. It's all relative to your setup position. And Andy Corso says, uh, kudos to Beth for putting herself out there. Hopefully this will inspire more women to have a go. No, oh, thank mm. you. Yes, let's hope so. I think that's the thing, it, it's a, it is a key thing to see, you know, we're surrounded by, you know, everything out there is the best golfers in the world. Yeah. And, and actually, that's, that's like kind of 0.001% of people of all playing. all golfers, yeah. Actually, most golfers would be quite shocked at, you know, the, 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 the level of golf which the average player actually is. Yeah. It's, it's nowhere near the low handicap level that, that you, one would assume. Yeah. Now, I think average, I'm saying the average handicap no matter how good the technology has been over the last 20 years, it hasn't, the hand, average handicap hasn't dropped over the years. Wow. It's stayed around 18. Yeah. So, you know, that's, 
a bogey or a hole. Yeah. Um, which is really quite, I mean, it's, it's still a good level of golf, yeah, very yeah. confident level of golf, but it's achievable. Yeah. But we just watch John Rahm or we just watch Lydia Ko or you know, all the time, playing yeah. that they are the best at what they do. Yeah. You, know, you don't say, right, I'm going to get in a Formula One car and drive like Michael Schumacher <laughs> yeah. or Lewis Hamilton or Max Verstappen. You go, you look in and they go, well, clearly they're ridiculously good at what You're they very do. Good, but yeah. in golf, we tend to kind of forget the relative levels are, are actually a, a lot different than what people think. Yeah. So I'll, try, I'll pop these. I'll pop a. Just a more kind of relevant, I've got a Strix on soft wheel, just as a kind of relevant ball to okay. start with versus the Pro V1s. I think you've got the seven iron there. I've got an eight, I think. Oh, eight, yep. You just have, have as many as many as you need to feel suitably limber. Yeah. I don't know if it's me, but these are going like higher. Sometimes when you've got like the screen right there, it, it, it feels like... pretty high. Okay, but, but um, it's not. <laughs> but when it's kind of going off into the into the blue, then. Uh, you, you, okay. you do get plenty of launch, which is good. Okay. Much better to see, much rather see someone who flights it really easily than, than very low. So what I will do, I'll give you a switch to something a little bit longer because all the test ones are... Yeah? I'm giving you the six just to be nice and cruel, but... Uh, <laughs> all our test ones are the six arms anyway, so... Okay. And uh, obviously... Uh, person your age shouldn't have injuries and things, but any, any injuries at all? No, no injuries, luckily. Not yet, then. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Just the, yeah, the, the mental injuries that go along oh, with yeah. playing golf mental, over a long time. Mentally yeah. scarred, but not, uh, no injuries <laughs> as of yet. Do you know, I actually haven't used the sign in a long time. Mm. I avoid my sex sign. I can always do, reason. if you prefer the seven, we can always use the seven as a bench. Yes, all right. I'll um, maybe get into it now. <laughs> so actually, in terms of setup wise, they're very, very consistent. Um, so whereas measuring the bits earlier, the actual the, the balance through the set of irons is really consistent. OK. Um, so, you know, in terms of the tolerance wise, really tight on tolerance, actually. All right, be a good hit. It's very right. Swing. Go, I'll get a, I'll get a few. What would you, um, whether it's six or seven, if, what would you tend to play them for distance-wise, a good hit? Distance. So there's a par three or a shot that you'd think, right, yeah, that's... Uh, probably my hybrids. Mm -hmm. I would tend to use yeah. four or five hybrids, I would okay. say. And what sort of, I guess, for them five hybrids, say, what would you, what would you hit that for from a yardage point of view? Uh, yardage, mm. like 140 to 150. Okay. Yeah, cool. And then, I don't actually know about this one. I guess a bit less. Uh, so, I mean, that, that one, a little bit of ground, it pitched... So finished at 130, pitched at a 110, then ran out of okay. it. But um, you know, what, what is good, you can definitely see where you've got some, you've got some speed. I mean, I've, uh, we were sort of saying earlier, I've got a little bit of a, an advantage on most things because I've actually seen your swing. Swing before, you know, yeah. Before. So you can see you, you put a little bit of speed and a bit of guts to the swing, which is good. You know, hence actually getting, getting good launch angle. It's, you know, it's always better to have a bit of speed and a bit of all flight. Oh, that was not great. Okay, I'll just see one more, that'd be great, and then I'll kind of yeah. run you through what I'm seeing. Okay. I think this might be my least favourite club. <laughs> <laughs> There's always one in the bag. Yeah. No, it's not actually my woods, it's definitely my least favourite. Okay, uh, the fairways, yeah, yeah. 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 
Mm. Okay. Caught the ground a bit, didn't I? So, so yeah, face is a little bit open on some of those, yeah. but um, actually kind of what the, put it on averages there, that makes it look worse than it is, but in terms of actually for a path point of view, yeah. a small number on the bottom right of those boxes, the um, tolerance either side. So you've only got like one and a half degree tolerance on your swing line. So okay. the only thing that most golfers of any ability don't realize how consistent they actually are. So you've got a your angle of attack, which is down, which is great with the iron, that's less than a degree. Club path is 1.7 degrees. So again, not very much. Um, it's the, the club face uh, consistency is the bit where if we can get that tightened up, then that's where the dispersion is going to tighten up. Okay. So tends to get Actually, face to target's pretty square. It's only um, it's only about one degree. Ironically, it's actually one degree left of target. Okay. It's just the path's going more left, so it's shaping. Um, but there's a little bit more. You've got a four and a half degree tolerance on that. So where the club face is getting to, that's where the variation's coming from. It's not from the line you're putting the club on. That's really consistent. Okay. So it's never as it's never as bad as one thinks it is. <laughs> um, so if you take that strongest hit, yeah, that's the one you've got the face most squared up on. And so then it's putting more, more ball speed on, more forward okay. momentum, yeah, straighter, sense. longer. So what you do in the swing really well is you really clear your hips through well. You get really nice with strong rotation and get your belt buckle going towards the target. You get your um, hips through the ball really well. It just tends to be the club face being a little left behind. So, and looking at the earlier swings, the ones where you get the, the club head through the ball, get the toe squaring up, it, it's purely squaring the face. That's that's so anything we can do with the clubs that can help with that is going to make a really big difference to seeing less of them going off right. So, again, okay. from a confidence point of view, you start to not worry about it so much and can just free it up. And, and if we can lose a lot of the right hand side, then the, the drop off in distance is going to be less, yeah. uh, and the incidence of the longer hits is going to be more. So, yeah. it should just kind of help a bit of a snowball on confidence with that. But yeah, swing line, your yeah, angle attack being down with an iron is perfect, um, really good to see that because uh, that means you're getting ball turf. So you're getting that little bit of a pinch on strike. Um, for Ironsman, we'd always like to see that. Um, so that's great. Uh, and so there's plenty of launch angle there with the six iron there, 19 degrees. It's a 29 loft, uh, which is, loft's got lower over the years, but the clear of um, that series has stayed a little bit more um, neutral rather than going, it's like some six irons are 25, which is just okay. close to my forearm. <laughs> Um, so, but you get plenty of launch on it. So you're saying earlier, you get lots of flight, yeah. which is great because you can then get the carry distance out of it. Okay. So there are lots of, lots of good bits in there. Club speed 65, that's good. Um, you know, there are a lot of ladies that drive a speed 65 to 70. So you, you're getting that with the six iron. So, um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a few different, well, I'm gonna get a head that I can control the weight on. Yeah. And then we'll, look at a few different shaft weights. Mm -hmm. And these ones are pretty light down at 40 odd grams. Now yeah. you can get too light. So there's this sort of concept with golf that if you go the lighter you go, the quicker you swing. But there's got to be enough to actually hit against. So if you take a, I don't know, say a tennis racket or a cricket bat or a hockey stick is too light, you're through the shot before the ball gets there. And there's actually nothing to, to drive against and to use to drop the club into the bottom of the ball. So we'll see by going a little heavier, does that actually help to drop the club in to then rotate around. Because okay. if it gets a bit light, it can go that way. Okay, so, yeah, 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 that makes, yeah. So that'll be your first yeah. test, but I'll, I'll get a, a, a very similar head to that, Fab. and then we'll progress the sharp one. Any questions you've got for me as we go through, just fire them at me. So I get a head that's a similar loft, so it's comparable on, um, on performance there. <laughs> Simon, whilst you're doing that, let's take a moment to look at some of these questions. Mm. Uh, Bill Ryan, we need a bush, big, sorry, a big push towards girls in golf around the world. It's time. Um, Nick Luton, I've just been fitted for irons, ping I 525s. I was expecting them to be standard, but they're blue dots. Is there a one degree line difference for each club? Uh, five iron, 61 degrees. Pitching wedge 66 degrees, is this normal or extreme? Um, ping progress there lies a little bit more than other brands. Um, so they tend to go from black dot to blue dots three quarters of a degree. Um, and then um, they tend to progress the lie through the set a little bit more um, than others. Most of the time you're looking at about, um, about half a degree per club is normal, standard. Um, but um, yeah, no, ping, ping progress a little bit more, so you end up with about a 
three degree progression from six under pitch wedge versus two. Uh, Steve the Pigeon, welcome Steve, thanks for uh, flying in. <laughs> Happy Friday, is it okay to ask about shaft weight in wedges? Uh, my irons have the Modus 105 stiff, but feel like my wedges should be heavier, just not sure how much heavier I should go. Um, normally it's about 10%. 10 grams is a good approximation. Some players play the same. Um, I'll just make sure the loft and lies the same. Some, some players, you do play the same shaft in wedges as irons, um, but probably 80% you'd go about 10 grams heavier is a, a broad approximation of kind of fairly standard progression on weight. Um, mainly just because you're putting a softer swing on, so you're using the weight to drop the club into the ball rather than a lighter weight to accelerate with. So, so shaft wow. weight's not vastly different, but the balance is more down the bottom end, okay. so near the club head. So this head's got exactly the same loft yeah. and lie. Um, length is the same uh, as your current ones, um, but it should feel a little bit more head heavy. Okay, we'll try it. <laughs> I'll just uh, log, oh, where's that tab? Just log this one in here. Um, two, three, two, and... Great. Great, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Okay, still open. Good contact there. Yeah. Okay, I'll watch one more, then I'm going to shift it around a little bit. Okay. So there's a certain kind of flow that I'm looking for that as you start down from the top, if we get it right, the club's just going to find the slot a little bit more easily. Okay, so weight in the bottom end is getting a little bit stuck, so okay. it's just dropping in behind. So I'm going to up the weight at the top end. And top end, okay. It should have felt pretty different. It did feel different. <laughs> There's no point going subtle with a change <laughs> first up. So. Go all in. Let's get to that. And some of it's also, it, it almost just shocks you out of some of the things you do with your current ones. So because yeah. you've got to move really differently, um, it, um, it just means you almost have to forget the hands to forget a little bit of what they're doing with the with your existing set because it doesn't work so body will naturally compensate a little bit and try different things so i'm just going to mark this just because it's a little longer just to grip it down a fraction I'm boiling. <laughs> Niels is tuning in again. Welcome, Niels. Uh, great that you've got a woman in the booth today. Very brave of Beth. My better half, also a woman, is warming on the thought of a fitting. This will help push her over the edge, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, listen, a wheeled TD. Very brave. I don't know whether it's a, it's a comment on me or just generally about putting yourself in front of loads of people <laughs> watching. But. Uh, Wheels TKD. Going back over the years, there weren't many options for the traditional ladies' clubs. Yes. Uh, has this changed or are there sufficient options for manufacturers now to be able to give far more choice and fit? There are some. Um, I think there's a consciousness. I mean, James and I were at a, uh, I think James was there at a product launch with TaylorMade. It was around the Kalia series a few years back and yeah. it was a definite um, not tactic, a definite um, um, direction for the company to go in. Um, and I think it kind of goes hand in hand. The more ladies that play, the more demand there is, the more ultimately if there's profit in it, they'll do it. Yeah. And that, that, <laughs> that actually is sense. something we all need to remember. It really boils down to that quite a lot of the time. But, um, but yeah, the offerings are better. Um, there are still a lot that are just sort of, there are, there are a lot more now, take the Clear Premier or the Ping, the, the GLEs that are designed differently because you want different launches and spins out of the woods in particular. Yeah. You know, the irons, the clear irons are a weaker loft and designed to flight more. So they are putting actual more te different technology into la ladies clubs and motor commas um, because the, the, the physical demands on the ball flow are a little bit different. So at 
generally speaking, lower club speed, you want more launch, you want more spin. So the higher you go in club speed and ball speed, the less need for spin because you want to keep it going forwards. If you've got lower ball speed, you need spin to keep it airborne. So they have to design them differently to optimize performance. So it has improved. It's, it's still, oh, whoops. It's still got a little bit of a way to go, but it's, it's certainly a lot better than it was a few years back, yeah. Yeah, it feels like we kind of maybe just used to make them a little bit pink and that was kind of it. Pastel shades were the yeah. order of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just um, throw a bit of pink on the clubs. And add then... a bit of loft and <laughs> put a pink or, or like light blue on the oh, crown. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think, yeah, no, this range was kind of very good for. Yeah, yeah, and the, the 40 gram shafts. Um, so just, just the base of that tape would be perfect. So a little the bit of tape put in the top, just at the bottom of that would be, yeah, perfect. Yeah. There? Yeah, great, thank you. it now so if it doesn't work well don't worry about it okay so as we, as we it almost we have to get it wrong to know what works i'm just going to move that over a little bit great thanks okay that's still so what we can see with that is that's still because you have that strong far from the hips, yeah. you move there and it's not an arm pull, so the club kind of stays like chaining into the wall. So if you make okay. the club heavier, it just separates it a little bit more. So I'm going to go, going to take the weight back down a little bit. Okay. And this is where it's about which, which bits of you do you use to generate speed. So if you're lower body oriented and kind of you're, you're kind of strong hip rotation oriented, it, it doesn't pull the handle and get the club out in front of you. So the club's got to come with you. So if you make it too heavy, it's like chaining it to the wall. It just gets stuck behind. And then stays there. But you want it to kind of be. Yeah. So we want it that as you as you move, the club comes through and naturally rotates and squares. Because then you're not having to do loads of stuff with the club face to do. In theory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. That's always a good start. Yeah. <laughs> so you kind of want your body to be in time with the club. Yeah, and that, that's why there are so many different options out yeah. there because you know, everyone moves differently. And you know, whether you, whether you're a you know, PJ tall player or a you know, 28 handicap beginner, we all we all function differently. differently. So the club's got to behave differently. To it's about synchronization. You know, so if the club can complement the way you develop your speed and your your physiology and the way you move, then you're just going to be more consistent with it. So, I think because the thing's different as well, I'm not knowing how to grip it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so used to my clubs. Okay. Running from a wire point of view, is there a is that in the way or is it? Maybe, I'll move it. Maybe that's better. That felt okay. very... A little right, okay. I think it feels... Like I definitely feel the this being heavier. Okay. Yeah. Than my one. Yes. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. But. Okay. okay I'm just gonna I'm gonna get a different head just to take a little bit of that weight off. Yeah. Just a little bit. He's warm, Maybe. We'll move it. Off and just pop the, pop the 
Sandra owns the mic. Oh, is that the mic? Just, just clip that, that, just clip that onto yeah. your, your top. Oh, onto the side, yeah. maybe. Like that, yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah could be. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> it's not going to catch on the way back, I guess. So it's one of these things we've only been doing this through winter. Yeah. <laughs> Hasn't been hot How many have you done? Do um, when do we start doing the YouTube stuff? Probably second half of last year, September time, I guess. Okay. Yeah. And every Friday live? Uh, as much as we can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try. I'm just getting a little more head weight, just okay. a little, little more head weight out, just to see whether that helps. Uh, seven. Okay, so I'm gonna get one weight from the workshop, just to literally drop two grams out of the head. So I've just had to turn the uh, microphone off while Simon went into the workshop because YouTube doesn't like live music. <laughs> uh, Steve, thanks for tuning in. Hard to believe that Beth has been playing for less than a year. Uh, as it says in the show notes, she has a, a nice golf swing, nice tempo, and swings the club consistently. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. uh, Norwegian Warhound, I forget where you're from. I think you're from <laughs> North America. Um, uh, why do you see narrowing loft gaps at the, at the top end of iron sets if there is always concerns of bunching up distance-wise? Uh, why not consistent loft gaps throughout the entire set? Um, or currently now, because there's normally um, a little bit more tech on the faces at the top of the iron set. So there's more face progression and ball speed progression. So um, in order to keep gaps consistent, certainly now, that's one of the reasons why. Uh, historically, there's always been dropped from four degrees to three, um, but um, I think that's just stopped Loft getting too low and keep spin on the ball. Okay. Okay, so that's, I can see that's, that's too light in the bottom end now. So I'm just yeah. going to shift that. I, so, I find it crazy how you can just see it straight away. So it's as, as you start that first move, yeah. if the club starts to drop in and work down the plane, then we know we're in the right place. Okay. If it works, there's a particular flow that I'm going to see. So it's depending on what that initial move of the club, it kind of goes out and then drops in, then you're just overpowering the bottom end and you can end up kind of throwing it into the ground. Um, when it works well, then the club drops in, you can use the weight and just free it up. So it'll, it'll move consistently from the top, whereas if it's out of, if it's out of sync, then it's gonna move in, you can overwork it or it drops too much inside. So there's... There is a theory behind the whole the, thing. Yeah, it's, it's why fitting is a dark art. Yeah. Because there's no absolute, there's no definite you change this parameter and this will happen, because it differs player to player. Um, so yeah, it's... I mean, some of it is just you've got to try things to see. So, like going back to a heavier shelf with a lighter weight head, yeah. is that then better? Uh, and then once we've tried a few other things, we'll normalise, go back to your current ones, and go right. Actually, you know, with potentially just the parameters and the, and the structure of the shaft, weight and balance point, does that just work really? It may be that we go. Actually, they work really well, um, and that's as good a result as changing everything. Yeah. Because um, at least it's clarity on right. It's actually that's, doing that's okay. Set up yeah, really yeah, nicely, yeah, yeah. I think that's the thing is we're not, from a fitting point of view, we're not actually just looking to find things that are wrong. We're actually trying to validate what's right as well. Okay. Better contact.
Okay, so where we've gone back a little heavier, the yeah. lighter head is definitely better than it was before, before, before the whole thing was getting really stuck. Those last couple, okay, they're still a little bit right, but the quality of contact's gone it's back. It's getting up. better. I'm gonna get yeah. another option to check with at that sort okay. of weight. I know, right. Always right. <laughs> <laughs> I give that a switch over. Thank you. What have you enjoyed most about golf as a sport? What's what's been the most enjoyable thing about it? The most enjoyable thing? Mm. I think just the challenge with yourself. Mm. I kind of like that. Yeah. I have never really been like I obviously played a bit of netball in sort of school, but then after that I never really played a sport. And I okay. think that's because like maybe I was kind of like didn't want to join a team okay. sort yep. of sport. So I think then when I started golfing, because it was just kind of like a battle with myself, <laughs> like obviously as well, like, you know, I've got businesses, so I kind of like enjoy yeah. a challenge. Then mm. I think probably that sort of like yeah. just, yeah, it, yeah challenge is it the fact that it's, with you. It's only you. Yeah, it's yeah not I like, think that's what it is. Because I think in other sports, someone can hit a tennis shot and you can't you can't return it, yeah. whereas in golf, it's it's a good or bad result, and it's only, yeah. You Actually, can, the, condition, you can only the conditions fix it. don't influence how you approach a shot, but they don't necessarily, they don't stop it being a good or a bad shot. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, it takes, there is a certain mentality, I think it is that bit of that success failure, and, yeah, you know, as you said earlier, about having you, you have to spend time on it, you know, it's, um, but knowing that it's good or bad because you've done something well. Okay, interesting. That was probably not good. Okay. Okay, that's got back behind you again. Okay, just to kind of normalise, I'm yeah. just going to go back to your back to current my club. one, just to kind of see. Right, we've tested around a few different things. Let's just okay. see if we go back. How do you now react with those having swung a few different weights and setups? I don't know if it's maybe just because I'm so comfortable with these. Okay, so what we can see from immediately going back to that, possibly because you had to work harder with some of the other ones, that squared up more easily. Okay. So with the other setups, you could see where we've gone heavier and almost forced you to have to work a little bit harder. Yeah, yeah. They've been getting a bit stuck, so you've had to get and fetch the club a bit more. That one straight away squared up more. Okay. So, which is good. I think it's certainly one of the aspects of the Kalia shafts is that they're not, they're definitely not bottom end balanced. They're, I wouldn't go as far as saying they're counterweighted, but their balance points a little bit more towards the handle because that makes it easier to square the face through. So it's a bit like okay. turning the club around. is a massive exaggeration of it, but you don't have to use a lot of effort to get the toe through the ball or the bottom end through the ball with no weight on the bottom. Yet more weight on the bottom gets it more dragged in. So you've got to work it harder. So the the grip end weighting of those shafts makes it easier to get the toe through the ball. Okay. Which is definitely something which is a good thing for you. Yeah. Okay, came off it a little bit, but... Yeah. It's definitely not got that same... In terms of that same drop behind like some of the other ones had, for sure. So face got open there, but it wasn't like it was completely behind you. Okay, so, so just do one thing, please. Feel-wise, mm -hmm. just get it going left. Try and get it yeah, going left. Yeah, don't worry about how. Just get that toe, that toe shutting down. And, okay. Yeah. We try, I think I, I tried mind, this the other day and I was like... I, I don't mind if it goes miles left, but just as a, okay. as a feel. Just try and imagine it when it comes down. Yeah, you've just got to get it. And... You've got to, I don't know, not necessarily a tree in front of you. You've got to get that ball going left to target. Well, it went right. Okay. Okay, so what's interesting is that it shows what you, what you did is you really kicked hard with your hips. Okay. So, so you, you cleared hard, which from a field point of view, left is your left hip's gone that way. 
which then just got the club behind. So just, just focus on getting the toe through the ball first. So almost because of getting the, the club through the ball before, before, your, my... before your body a little bit. Because because you, you go so strongly with your lower body, it, it can do that. It can get, the more you kick, it can drop the face open. So it's actually a case of getting the club head will feel like out there, because you're gonna, your hips are gonna go anyway. So just more of like a... So it's feeling like you're getting the, the, the toe through the ball, yeah. Rather than... Okay, that's okay, because it went left, you got it flipped over. There, there'll be coaches that'll be better at explaining the best way of doing this. Okay. But, so some of your strength is generating the speed is you use your hip really well. Yeah. But it's just then kind of not getting your shoulders and your hips out of sync. So they get kicked through really strong and then, and then the upper body stays behind a little bit. So it's just finding a feel to time this that up. kind of ties it together. Whether it's more thinking about your core rather than hips and thinking it could be your kind of stomach turning back and through rather than hips kicking. It's just where they're getting a little bit out of sync. It drops the club behind you and that's the one that goes open. Whereas the one a couple of swings back it's that just got everything through in sync so and it's interesting with those it's definitely less that separation is less exaggerated for certain um and so this is why i don't coach because i'm not good at i can see what the club and the player are doing yeah but my but i'm not great at working out the root cause on the swing side of things that's where him upstairs um but it's it's where probably because you for Ladies are much more flexible than men. So, yeah. you know, most guys would, couldn't even dream of getting the kind of the hip separation relative to your mid back that you get. So, not a problem for them. Most of the time, most of the guys could just do that and could, there's no movement there at all. For you, some of the, it's a great thing to have mobility, but sometimes if you, if you are not necessarily hypermobile, but if you've got a lot of mobility, then it can, it can, you can get you into positions that you wouldn't see that many other people achieve. So you take, I'm trying to think in terms of the ladies game, who's got huge mobility. Um, I'm trying to think in terms of swings that I've seen. It's why you see a lot more ladies get kind of over the top. Over the top, yeah. Because they're able to rotate so much so further. So far, yeah. So actually it's about kind of reining that in. So things like Pilates helps just to kind of tighten, tighten things up, up and not, not let that range of motion. It's the range of motion, not how you're moving sometimes. I'll try and work on. I think as well because I've been trying to work on my hip rotation so much. Okay, yeah, yeah. That that's one thing I've been like really focusing on because I was so maybe armsy. Okay, before. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and this is the standard so golf. That what you've done, you've done it really well. Um, and with golf, it's, if you if you have if you've got a kind of a, almost a kind of mentality where you can make, so you get some players that can make a change and a big change. Yeah. And it's great they can, but you'll tend to go kind of from one side to the other, to the other, to the other. And you get the players that just can't make the change. They never quite yeah. kind of get there. It creeps there and creeps there and creeps there. Whereas you'll go that way, that way, that way. I'm up. flipping back and um, forth. <laughs> yeah. And, and so it's, it's great you can make the change. It's maybe kind of just reining the feel back a little bit so you're not overdoing it. Overdoing it. Yeah, we just stood a little close to it, but um, it's just got near the near the hosel a little bit. Okay. But club path a lot better, a lot squarer. Yeah. yeah, and so like that, you can just see where. You don't kick quite so far ahead. You can see everything starts to work down work all down. together. And then, so you know, we started, your swing line was like eight or nine degrees out to in. Yeah. That last one, three and a half. So wow. it's, it's everything kind of sort of squared bit, off and got more connected. It was a bit more yeah. together as well. I yeah. did feel that. So in terms of shot shape, that's got four yards. So really, really nice small amount because that's in a better place than it also allows. I, I think the path going left, the, the more your, I'll do it so the camera can see there, the more your hips open up, the club's gonna follow those left. So if they open and leave your upper body behind, then the club's gonna follow Watch. suit that okay. way. And it's just that bit of a time of getting, if it, if it happens, if they fast slightly later, 
then the club can drop in and square versus going that way. That way. But and so that's that's just because you're really mobile, <laughs> and you and, and you've got that kind of thigh. You've got a quick thigh of your hips yeah. as well, so they really kind of snap and clear that's out true. really well. And that's where you 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 can get a lot of power in there. You can get a lot of really good amount of speed. It's just not getting the separation the between your yeah. upper body and your hips. But that last swing, really nice line. Yeah, and, that felt and nice. Certainly, I think in terms of, and this is where looking at where your clubs are and right, what's going to make a tangible difference to. Is there something that's going to make a really big difference to the arm? The answer is no. They actually, they work really, they suit well because they're not overly heavy. Okay. They're not overly head-weighted. Um, and right now, they're, they're not hurting you moving, moving forwards game-wise. Possibly something like the sandwich, we can have a look at that a little later on. That's a little clumsy shape-wise, I think. Yeah. Um, and just because I've got to explain that now, I've said it. Um, reason for that is the amount of bounce on that. So it's got a really wide sole and a very, very heavy kind of back edge. There's lots of, lots of, I think talk about bounce, it's the amount of sole profile, the height of the I was height talking about wedges the other day, actually, because yeah. that is kind of the only one that I use. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's, the, it, the Kalia series is, 50% of the industry is in the US sales wise. Yeah. They're designed around US turf. Okay. So, which is softer, the soft sand, Nice lush fairways, <laughs> not like we get here. So the problem not there is that if I kind of stand up, if we put that on a flat, yeah. that sits, the leading edge sits proud from the ground. So the problem is here, you've got to, you've got to get the leading edge, the handle forward, forward. and down and de it to get the strike onto it. Now, a horrible muddy lie, or like when it firms up in summer, a tighter turf, that, that bounce, that sole shape stops the leading edge getting into the bottom of the or if you get a bunk with not a lot of sand in yeah yeah absolute nightmare <laughs> um so because actually what you do with the club face to tend to open up that should be good for bunker shots yeah so the little wedge shots around the greens that should actually be something that you do pretty well yeah I do not actually, that i'm yeah. putting pressure on you at all but um but that that nature of the face working that way that and way. under and open is great for short game but the more that opens up you see how much differential you get there. There's just no way that can get into the ball. So I'll do that there. So if I square that off and then open it up, the leading edge sits up. So the more towards summer we get, when the ground's firm and the grass is thin, so it sits down on the ground, whereas in the States it's thick and sits up, so the ball perches up. So on that turf, that can get under the ball and then the bounce takes effect. Yeah. On here, the bounce takes effect before the leading edge gets there. So summer, the turf, really tight. Winter, the bunkers, no sand or really firm, Bad. same kind of thing. Yeah. So that we can definitely improve and give you more versatility short game wise. But actually for where you are now, and actually I think kind of your, the progression wise, I think if we, if we try to change too much, then the problem is that we make now really hard. Whereas yeah, actually yeah. we don't need to make now any harder. It's actually more about if you can, where you've worked really hard on, on getting the hip kick and getting that acceleration, <laughs> just slightly separated where your, where your upper body and your lower body get to, and those are the ones that go off right. If we can just align those back up a little bit more, then you're gonna hit that shot a lot more. Mm. And the more natural that gets, you can start to put the speed and the kick into it, and then it's just gonna go further and further and further. Um, but with that kind of shot pattern, that's, that's great. That's a really nice control little fade. Um, but we can see by pushing anything heavier, it's counterproductive right now. Okay. So. Iron ores, I'm going to check one other thing on the irons. I want to yep. check where the lie is on that. But I think, um, say, where the woods are, we've probably got more that we can do. Um, but no, the irons are in a good place. Okay. So, yeah. And like I said earlier, we're not necessarily you know, trying to find fault in things. We're trying to find reasons why things work and don't work. Don't work. So actually, if we can find a reason why it works, and that can give you confidence to go, right, I know the irons are good. I can just, you know, if I... As your technique tightens up, your shots are going to get so much more consistent because you're not fighting the clubs. Yeah. So, so this has got a little chalk line on. Okay. If you wonder what it was. <laughs> so this will leave me a little line on the face. Okay. So, so oh, this so will show us how it. toe up, toe down it is. So.
and possibly it's where being a bit more positive with it. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll finish that sentence. I just start. Oh, head goes off different tangents. So by kind of committing, getting through it. Yeah. That means you're, you're less likely to kind of steer and work it open. But again, the, the extent to which you get your hips going through is just then moved it back that way a little mm. bit. So, so what that was showing is that's basically dead square up the face. Okay. So a little on the toe side, but it's not pointing to the toe or to the heel. So that means the club's coming in nice and flat to the ground, which is where we want it. Okay. So, that angle. Yeah. Um, so you can see dead square up the face which is exactly where we want it. So, yeah. So we don't need waste any more energy on the irons. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, we'll come back to the wedge at the back end. That's sort of okay. something we do at best, least, least effort required. Um, so, yeah, and, and actually the, the other good thing with the set is, like I said earlier, how consistent the specs are on this. So from a swing weight point of view, um, just to explain to people watching there, there's like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of a swing weight point tolerance between the six, six iron down to pitch wedge, which is remarkably consistent. When you consider composite shaft, um, all head weights have got tolerances on uh, by a couple of grams. That's equivalent to 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of a gram. So that's really consistent. So fair play to TaylorMade for that set. <laughs> They've done that's, well. That's better than a lot of pros get. <laughs> I'm not lying either. <laughs> It's a lot better than a lot of pros get. Wow. So. Now the uh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> Here goes nothing. So T height, I can go lower or say higher. It's sort of anti-clockwise there. Uh, um, okay. Uh, so just to sort of see where that looks and then I can, I can adjust it as, as so required. Or, or if there's a visual that you like or hit a couple no. and we can move it. Yeah. Just see how it goes. <laughs> can sense the confidence oozing. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. So I'm tee it slightly lower, but that's good. Yeah. Okay. And would you say, no, I might, might bring it, bull flight, high, neutral, just because it always looks different to someone else watching, so. Okay. Okay. I tend to. So the con the con was tend to hit down and a little bit low. Is that something you're constantly working on angle attack with the driver or? I think I've just got very inconsistent swing with it. Okay. So I try and like manipulate the, yeah. The okay, kind of like yeah. Back through it, okay. But. I don't know. I lost confidence with it and then it kind of came back to me somehow. Yeah. But now I'm like, oh. And it's such an important word, you know, confidence is such an important word in golf. You've got to, the more comfortable you can feel over something, you relax and swing it better. <laughs> Ripper. Okay. Yeah, that's probably. That probably ties that. with more the. Yeah. Yeah, actually, no, we're in we're in draw swing line territory here. So yeah, yeah, no path path face to path really good. Again, what I what I always like seeing from any swing is that's just there's a real nice kind of snap and energy through the ball. So, okay. um, yeah, that's certainly something. Don't definitely don't stop that. So it's much better to be. I mean, generally from a game point of view, if we can generate speed then the technique, as that improves, can tighten up the dispersion, but speed's really key. Okay. Swing, nice. Okay, let's see one more. Yeah. Don't know what you're worried about. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon there are a lot of people who would like to use a foursomes partner based on those couple of drives. Straight than I was yesterday, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, interesting. So where with the, there is a definite change in pattern with the length of club, I think. So okay. with these, 
So I take that last swing, <laughs> which screen James has got on, but you, know, you attack angle a little bit upward, which is great. Okay. So the first one's actually three degrees up. So, um, but a little bit upward, path 0.2, so basically absolutely dead on line. Uh, and again, you've only got one degree tolerance on path there. So you swing line with the drive. Now, with the drive, you're actually probably a little squarer than you are with the irons. And that's probably because of making a bit of a, a bigger rotation. Yeah. You're then coming at it from through the inside and turning back through a little bit more, so sweeping it off. Mm -hmm. Bigger, but you're turning behind it, it can turn back through rather than irons a little bit shorter, swings a bit steeper, gets a little more out to it. But it's actually really neutral, the path there. But starting to see now overpower and flip left. So a couple of those, you can see you get a little bit of a, a little bit of a flip over coming through the ball. So it's generally sync between you and the kind of the handle end look pretty good, but potentially it's not that light in terms of setup in the head, but where you're, I mean, up at 75, 76 mile an hour club speed, that's really good. Um, so, and you can hear there's a really nice contact on there as well. It's got a nice sound to it. Mm. It's funny, we've got all these machines, but sound tells you loads. <laughs> but it just looks like you're able to flip it over a little bit. Okay. So, um, but yes, flights, I mean, it's a great Lynx flight. Um, so flight is a little on the lower side. So it's got to find the cursor, okay. Um, so the previous shot, there was, you know, arrow straight down yeah. there. That was, the, that was the only one you got a little bit downward on angle of attack. Now it's not even remotely enough to worry about. So okay. um, that's not something you've got to worry about at all. But the flight is a little on the flat side. So if I put uh, this on, Kind of carry total. You can see from this screen there, oh, yeah. if we can get a little bit more launch angle, there's yeah. another 10 yards or so through the air. Um, but then if you get it a little bit on the up, and that's a bit less ball speed, yeah, then we should be able to pick up a little bit more carry again. So, um, but yeah, if we can pick the launch angle up a little bit, your carry distance will go up. Um, so, but generally speaking, line through the ball is great. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is just make the head a little heavier. Okay. Just to see what that does. Yep. So you can kind of isolate one change first. <laughs> Where's the favourite place you've played so far? Favourite? Mm. We'll throw the standard golf questions in there. Uh, kind of the we point. went to... Um, Marrakesh Christmas time uh, okay. and I loved it there. The cool I just thought it was beautiful. They're meant to be some really good golf in Morocco now. Yeah, really good golf. And I think that they're just building more and more and more all the mm. time. So yeah. they're gonna make it like a really it does big help golf when the sun on your back as well. Oh yeah, it? true. Yeah. yeah. And it was Christmas, winter time and I think we had the worst winter ever. So. Yeah. It felt really long winter. It felt, yeah. like, felt like winter actually out there today. Still yeah. Uh, um, yeah, it's still going. We're still in, in winter. Uh, and in the UK? And it was golf was cheap, yeah. It uh, was okay. like yeah. Whereas, say, like in comparison to say, like Portugal or like Spain, yeah, then the green fees were a lot cheaper. So, yeah. And uh, and within UK. UK. Um, do you know what? I actually, the only places I've played are in Wales, mm. not in. So I played Bolton Heath the other day, didn't I? Okay, yeah. That was amazing. But um, the heather is quite a experience. Yeah. Though, isn't it? <laughs> it's funny. The first shot anyone takes out of heather. Yeah. Um, I remember a, a, a guy I played with years back. Uh, good player. who's a category one golfer but he'd not played certainly not that kind of heather yeah uh, and um he took a the lie looks like he took a six iron out and, uh, and me and the, the other guy were playing with looking this is this isn't going to go well um and literally he, as as he went to hit it the club just stopped yeah the ball went about two yards and the look on his face was like i just don't understand what happened there um it, we, it's, we it's had like a like talk nothing else. with um like one of the lifelong members of the club. Mm. And the first thing he said to us was, if you get in the heather, yeah. just take your most lofted club and just yeah. get it out. Yeah. It is, it's so penal. Yeah. It's so penal, yeah. It's, um, it's almost worse than the trees you can see a way out. You know, there's a shot out, the ball's normally lying okay because normally not a lot, and there's a gap. Heather, you just, it's a lottery. Yeah. Absolute lottery, yeah. On this one, yeah, it was like something I hadn't seen before. Yeah. But, um, I'm trying to think of my favourite club. Oh, we played, um, is it Ashburnham the other day? That was beautiful. Okay, yeah. That was really nice. Yeah, I've not played much in Wales. Well, not, I've played Conway. You should play in Wales. Wales I've played, but um, do need to get over and there's yeah, a lot beautiful. of good golf from Wales. <laughs> OK. 
The problem is we're spoiled around here. We've got so much good golf around here. Yeah, you do around here, yeah. We were driving through and there was... Um, Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've got a good friend of mine who's a member at um, Gog Magog near Cambridge. And whenever golf course conversations come up, I'm, I'm banned from talking about yeah. it. Because one, my home course is George's Hill, and two, he said that you, you travel like five miles and there are 20 top 100 courses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm barred from any <laughs> conversation because I don't have a handle on reality, apparently. <laughs> so. But like Wales, you get your Porthcawl and Harlech and Conway and um, oh God, uh, your Parl and Kenfield. Yeah. And, yeah. I'm going to try and complete them all now this summer. Yeah. All the top ten. Okay. Okay, so I added a little bit more weight again, so I don't, I don't mind it being different, or I did a bit more on the last one. Oh, so I don't, okay. I don't mind if it goes a little different in flight because I kind of want to get it to the point where it okay. changes what's going on, and then we know we're either in a better place or we've gone too far. Swing line's really, really neutral. It's great, really nice. Okay, so we've gone a little too far. That's fine. Um, so that kind of gives us kind of a top and bottom. Yeah. But again, just to, if I can give you confidence in what you're doing, club path is still dead square. So okay. if you go back through, you know, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Yeah, there are a lot of very, very low handicap players that you could sell that to for quite a lot. Okay. Quite a lot. So your delivery is great. So I'm going to get a few bits that I can change. I actually yeah. might, um, I'll get, Oh, one of these because it's actually got an interchangeable hosel on it so i can change some shafts and weights and things in one of these heads i'll do that first yeah see what the shaft and the different weights do to timing and flight and then we can look at other heads okay but no driver swing is good i want to get to 200 yards <laughs> Oh I've only done it a few. I've done it a few times, and then. Well, if we get, you know, we take that that swing there, you know, seventy-eight odd mile an hour club speed. Yeah. There's another. I think seventy-eight to so thirty-nine. So, hundred. So there's another five, four, five miles an hour ball speed. So that on its own. Is seven to ten yards, probably seven or eight yards, and then if we can make the, excuse me, make the flight a little bit more efficient. It, it is in there. It is in there. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Just absolutely wet. And I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to stick it on altitude either. Like that. What is the mass behind smash factor then? It's literally ball speed divided by club speed. Oh, that's it. Yeah, so it's an efficiency ratio. Um, so, um, and some of it's, you know, if, if you take, you know, okay, that, that swing we hit down a little bit. Yeah. You, you're more likely, you, if you get up on it very slightly, that, that's more likely to get you a 150 out of it. You might get 147, 48 out of a slight downward strike. Um, so there are things technique-wise that'll help with it, and otherwise it's just getting the face squared and contact point. You know. um, but the things like the shaft and the timing and the ability to deliver the club square and in sync, that will help with it as well. So, right, so I'm gonna get a couple of options shaft-wise. I think one of the guys has taken my wrench out of the bay. I was going to get the, get the oh, just to do them a disservice. <laughs> okay, so this is just, actually this one's just a little bit less long. I definitely don't want to go longer. Okay. Um, this one's a little less long. I'm just going to weight the head up slightly as well.
Yeah, I think with um, so you getting into golf last few years, we've seen how many more people have come back to playing. Yeah. And ironically, you, know, you, you can't almost feel like you have to whisper it, but COVID was great for golf. I was going to say, do you think COVID helps? Massively, yeah. yeah I think what, what it did, a lot of players who started playing for the first time, I don't know whether they would have stayed in, because was it just because it was the only thing you could do? You could do, yeah. Uh, it was outdoors and you know, it yeah. was nice weather for a load of it in the first, first section of it. Um, but we saw a lot of players who'd played before coming back to back. playing because they just remembered how much they enjoyed it. Um, and you know, the social aspect of it. It's, um, True. Good ball speed. Okay, still a little low, but so that one, a little less club speed, but contact yeah. gets come out a little bit flat, but that's then got a good efficiency to it and still nice and square. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna loft that up a little bit. Yep. Yeah, I think people uh, the working from home bit as well. I think um where you know, my wife's now you know, three days a week in, in the city where she works and yeah. um I think for if if there's elements of either working with different time zones or markets, you've got early or late to play. Now we've got the light, um, and just generally you know, a little bit more. I think freedom, freedom. to fit it in. Yeah. I think that's the thing. It's that that bit of having the time or make making the time to do it. Making yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I guess eighteen holes. Quite a lot of time, isn't it, really? Yeah, it was, I mean, it was when it was just nine holes and two balls. That I could leave home, play, and get home within two hours, which actually was really nice. Okay, I'm going to change that up a little bit. It's still got that little bit of overpowering the bottom end, too. Okay. So. Oh, yeah. Oops. Okay, yeah, so I went um, initially just with the. Um, I want to keep it fairly light with the old deal of the Ascent 40. I'm just going to go to something with a bit more weight in the tip of the shell now. Uh, so I think. But I want to keep the weight fairly light. Does it feel different? So, Feels very different, yeah. Does it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we're going to go with the VRTX Red. So it's a similar kind of 46, 47 gram shaft, but the balance is down the bottom end a bit more. So you can use just head weight or you can use balance point in the shaft to okay. affect how it swings. So. so what is my standard one that I use? Fair, you know, it's, it's not massively counterbalanced. It's similar to the irons, it's kind of upper mid. It balance points more, more towards the kind of upper section of the club. Okay. Again, helps it come through. True. So yeah. generally speaking, if you get a, a lower speed player, you're looking to make it easier to get the club head through to generate the swing speed. Yeah. Um, and then vice versa, if you get someone who's you know, a really strong hitter, normally it's because of more muscular action, it's more of a big old pull on it. Oh. And if you don't have weight in the bottom end, then you can throw the club out. So you, weight in the bottom end there, if you get a strong pull on the handle, literally drops the club into plane. So you're using the balance to keep the club in plane, really. Oh. And as long as There's so much to it, isn't there? <laughs> Uh, there, there isn't and there isn't. I think, um, I think if you just started, you wouldn't know. Oh, no. And you wouldn't even not. think no. to know. No. You'd just and, go and out and buy a random set of clubs and be like, oh, well, these and will it, do. Yeah. Well, but in, in a lot of instances, it's kind of good to not know. Because, yeah, maybe. I mean, I like to think that I was far too intelligent to earn a living playing. <laughs> um, I think if you're analytically minded, the problem is you can easily overthink, overthink. stuff. And so you, you get a paralysis by analysis thing. Um, and like some of the best players are able to either compartmentalize and just shut that bit off mm. or don't have that bit in the first place. So they're just C shot, hit shot, or like someone like Tiger can just, he, once he steps over that line, they're into a zone and, and they can just go with what they see they rather see. than, and, and kind of uh, most of the time kind of get rid of all the guff going on in the back of their heads. Um, so kind of conscious thought is the bit that paralyzes everything because you start to, to worry about things or worry about a result. Okay. It's definitely, definitely different, which is good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 
It doesn't have to be, this is why it sounds really weird, it doesn't have to be a good result to be, to be good, because at least it shows us, right, we changed the something. setup. Something. Not an inconsiderable amount, inconsiderable amount, rather, um, and straight away that face got open on you, but the swing line stayed nice and square. And then you go and smacked it. Oops. No, that's fine. <laughs> That's, that's fine. So still a little low, but it's interesting. Yeah. Again, is it... I'll watch one more of that. One more? Was the first one because you just weren't used to having so much to hit against? I think so, yeah. And is that then better because it now allows you to be more positive with it? Or is it a... Or is it require... The, the, it's either a good thing because it gives you something to hit against, or it means you've got to be spot on to spot get it on. to work. So it's just kind of working that out. Okay. A good, strong move. Okay, that's mm. solid. Okay, uh, I'm going to rein it back a little bit, okay. just a little bit. But I think it's definitely better having having a certain amount to work with the driver because okay. the driver is not something to be subtle with. No, it's there for distance. So yeah. you might as well be positive with it. Um, I think that first one, see where the face got to. That was, I think, because. If you did that with that, it's going to rip left mile, so you yeah. end up having to steer it a bit. And then the next one you committed to and, square, and you got it absolutely dead square. So, but I, it's, I'm just going to pull it back a little bit. Okay. Okay. Uh, 47 odd grams. <laughs> Just thinking about exact like dead weight and where to go with it right yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. This shot's a little bit longer, so I'm just like I did with some of the irons, just going to put a little bit of tape on the top. <laughs> Beth, okay, Wal Beth Walsh there, uh, Wheels TKD said, uh, maybe I missed at the start, but what brought Beth into golf and what are her goals for the next 12 months? What brought me into golf and what was my... Goals for the next 12 months. Goals? Uh, what are your goals for the next 12 months? Okay. So the reason I actually started playing golf was probably because my partner plays too much golf and I'm sitting in the house on my own <laughs> doing nothing. I bet too much. I bet, I bet that definition's changed now, hasn't it? It's cannibalism. <laughs> cannibalism was the answer. Cannibalism. <laughs> Has failed. Yeah. Self sabotage. Yeah. So if, if, it, if what wasn't audible, the plan was get Beth into golf. You'll both play more together. Yeah. Happy days. Yeah, and now, exactly. and now, you just record her playing golf. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I think my goals for the next twelve months, obviously, for me to improve but mostly to get more women into golf is my ultimate goal and what, from what doing you, all of this. What do you see as being the biggest, what do you think is the biggest barrier to it? Is it just almost the perception of golf as a sport and it not being inclusive and, and kind of almost like a, because I think certainly historically, and when I say historically for the last five, five, ten years, it's been, the you know, golf clubs have been the preserve of, Old I think men, it's, it's the golf. It's, it's the, the golf clubs. I think it's it. the like intimidation. Yeah. Tartan, Rupert the bear trousers, and yeah. causing. But actually, they haven't been like that for a long time. It's no. just that they haven't, they haven't put out that we're not like that as a sport. And you like my local club even has we well, used to have a men's only section to it. Like it's obviously not anymore, but that was like a thing. So mm -hmm. I think in maybe more women's brains, it's still a male-dominated sport, which, which it is. Yeah. But. It's, but it's a more open, it's, it's a sport that's now very much open to yeah. progression and change. And, and I think as well this. because it is something you've kind of got to do by yourself unless mm. there's groups or, yep. you know, a friend wants to join in with you, mm. then it is a singular sport. So you yeah. go to the golf range on your own, you go, we don't have to play on your own, obviously, but yeah. finding people who are just as keen as you to play, yeah. women, there's obviously less of them. So I think and that's I probably the biggest. From a from a yeah, low handicap, but most 
higher handicappers think that lower handicappers don't want to play golf with them. Yeah. Whereas actually, the, or the less I play, um, I find the less I care who I play with, as long as they're fun to play with. Yeah. Because actually a lot of low handicappers get very serious. Yeah. And okay, I, I get a little stressed for the course at times. <laughs> um, it, on the golf course after a bad shot and driving in traffic, awful. Uh, I do self self-flagellate on the golf course yeah. and call myself a few things when I've hit a bad shot. But um, it's then remembering actually, it's, it's actually about fun being fun. out there. And, and um, you know, played with, um, there's a comp officer partnered up with an ex-captain at the club. And, and he's a, I think he's a 21, 22 handicapper. And he, was, so he just said, oh, thanks for not bailing on me. I was like, well, actually, you're just really nice company. Yeah. Um, and actually, I think, and I think that's the last couple of years is that's, Remind people that that's what golf is actually the more actually, important bit of golf is that we all, all a lot of people play in a competitive and want to win stuff but actually most people play because they enjoy where they are who they're playing with and that whole kind of club the company they're in so, yeah. yeah but I think that's why the I don't know if it's the same in England actually but a load of Welsh clubs are doing the new to golf scheme so it's okay. basically yeah. like a free sort of six week trial for women I don't think it's pushed very well but. Um, where I am now, I think 24 people have joined, women. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, you know, everyone sort of starts at the same level then as well. Yeah. So I think that's another thing is finding people And you think proportion to level. how many female yeah. members at that club there are or yeah. were, has that just doubled it? Yeah, or, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so actually proportion, it's a massive change, yeah. which is great, because it's only going to snowball. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> or it makes it more likely to, to, yeah. to keep developing, because say, what, it's one they say one thing feeds the other. Participation feeds participation and Okay. And we're certainly seeing more ladies come in for fittings. Are you? That's been noticeable the last couple that, of years. That's good. Um, I that think partly there are more, more options there and, and I think there's yeah. there's that um I say there are more ladies club club options from brands but actually I think as a part of the industry I think it's getting better known that actually fittings for everyone of every level yeah you don't you know for the, the elite level you're fine-tuning you might alter the loft or the spin or distance um, consistency through a set whereas actually you know for you know a, a, you know mid R handicapper it's functionally have you got a completely wrong club in club. the bag you know should you be using a hybrid instead of a five iron or a five wood instead of a three wood um, or the driver style is completely wrong in the wrong yeah. loft which proportionally makes a much bigger difference yeah um, so you absolutely not the preserve of the cat one cat two golfers yeah. not that's that I feel yeah. Yeah. when I started my mentality towards getting fitted was oh just all the good things mm. yeah, yeah definitely yeah. all the pros it's just yeah. because the, be the, the lower handicappers so. were the ones who kind of went actually yes that can make yeah. a difference and probably rec either valued their own games enough to say, right, I know that's not me, it must be the club, so I'll get that done. Yeah, um, yeah either or, I think. Swing. A little bit more flight on that. Yeah. Okay, let's see one more there. Seems quite straight. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little higher on the face, just, just a little ball speed, but definitely a little bit more height. Okay. Okay, I might come back. Just whipped it over a little bit. I'll yeah. come back to that. If you make change it up a little bit more, yeah. we'll come back to that. Yeah. Quite like the feel of that, though. Okay. That's the uh, VA composite villain. It's got quite a villain. It's um, so VA um, are quite into their graphics. So this one's almost like Marvel superhero oh, kind wow. of. So almost like a Lichtenstein s pop arty, but the face there, the villain. So they've got villain nemesis. Uh, there's a, another shaft of a similar kind of sinister, yeah, which is launching soon, if it's not just about to launch. Um, so they've kind of gone down a theme there. Theme route. Yeah. I like that, it's different. Felt nice. Shaft wraps. <laughs> Um, 
And you mentioned you do, uh, you have your own business today. It, are you, yeah. What, uh, what uh, businesses are those? Uh, coffee shops. We've got a coffee ah, shop yeah. in Swansea, which mm -hmm. is, yeah, it's sort of like brunch and coffee pretty much. So yeah. I'm addicted to golf and coffee, so two things at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, two of the best things in life, so it's not um, too bad. Absolutely, definitely, uh, definitely coffee fans here, that's for sure. Good. Mikey does our puffer coaching, I'm sure he's got some form of coffee running through his veins. <laughs> I try to limit it to mornings mainly. Yeah, same. Um, I'm a morning coffee person as well. Of, uh, the only time I ever had a massive hit from coffee was we were in Rome and um, with the Nespresso's you get the ristretto oh, the pods, which rist are nothing like a ristretto, no. which I found out when I had one in Rome <laughs> and had to sit down for five minutes. Seriously yeah, intense yeah, coffee. Yeah. It's proper Italian coffee, I that didn't is. I get shakes, I just felt faint. And my wife looked at me and went, you all right? Mm. Straight no. from coffee? Yeah. Oh, wow. Maybe I'll avoid coffee in Rome. Okay. Not bad. A little left, but not bad. Nice flow to it. Yeah. Okay. So it's the um, the Acro the FX one forty. Okay. Okay, that's, that's nice. That's not nice. That's nice. Okay, so that's so the proportion of spin to launch is better there. Okay. So where with your current one, the was you know that was still hit down on a little bit. Um, it launched to sort of eleven, spun two eight. That one, it's almost a bit too low on spin. Okay. So um, it runs out well, but it tends to kind of just fall out of the sky a little bit. So for you, if we can get the launch angle up a bit more and bring the spin up with it, then the carry goes up. But like that strike, really nice and square, it's it's still going to run out well with a low spin. But I just want to get, I'm going to measure the exact loft on that and yeah. then get ahead, I can get a little bit more loft in. Yeah. Um, but that was a really nice hit. Yeah, that felt so nice. So I'm just going to check exact, because they most of them measure slightly differently than what they say on them. So just going to see what this one's at and then loft it up a little bit more. So is it just the, the one coffee shop or have you got a couple? So the one at the moment and then we're actually opening two more this year. So mm. it's got, got a busy year ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice low stress year. Yeah, yeah definitely. That and, that and developing your golf. I yeah. know. I'm just throwing it all in there. Yeah. Keeping myself extra busy. Okay. So actually this one will have it a little bit more loft than this because this one's just a fixed glued hosel. Okay. So for, for their fitting ones, they've got the adapter like all the other drivers they do. But for the production one, it's fixed. So that actually measures a little bit more than this one does already. Um, I'm gonna get ahead, I can get a little bit more loft on now. Yeah, when I had this actually, because obviously all my partners have the adjustable on them and mm. he was... Kind of it's done to save a bit of weight, um, predominantly. Um, yeah. So it's like on some fairway woods and hybrids, they're glued and it, it stops adding a few grams to the hosel. So for the so the production ones, yeah. that's just saving a couple of grams. So it's all about, the Calias is all about getting weight out, weight predominantly. So I want to head to launch it higher. I'm going to go to a ping. Or which. I think marks. There's a, I think there's a head, head the other side. There's a 12 degree. I think. If there's a um, 430 max 12 degree. Yeah. Yeah. We get busy with more bays. We're, gonna, we're in the process of doubling up on some of the uh, fitting bits. Thank you. 
very busy. Yeah. How many so, fittings do you do a day usually? So full bags. So it's slightly different. I do more hours in the week, but fewer each day. Yeah. So the guys when they're fitting will tend to do um, kind of a eight till six or seven. Wow. Um, and they can do potentially up to three full bags a day, wow. which is quite full on. Yeah. Um, but they do kind of 40 hours a week across four days. Um, most of them. Um, I'll do if I'm doing full bags too. But as you will now, I'm trying to pretty rein back a little bit on the fitting to have the time doing other things. Like yeah. Business strategy and stuff like that. So, yeah. It was really easy when it's just James and me and no clients. <laughs> yeah. It's not very, it's not very good for, for earning a living. Um, Quick question from Ian Linfoot, a uh, bit of a random one. Uh, heel hang putters, are they a thing? Are there any produced? What type of stroke would they suit? Great heel live. Hang, so I think, great live. I think Beth will improve very quickly. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, he, so heel hang, so there, there have been some toe up putters, generally what they've been called. Um, they, every putter will suit someone. So the amount of toe hang is to do with how much you rotate the face and whether you need it to make it easy to square the toe in. Or it's like for me, I over rotate, so I need toe hang to open the face a bit through impact. Um, so toe up putters are generally geared towards m taking any resistance to the toe coming through out. Um, they're pretty extreme and so they suit very specific putting strokes. Mike would be the best place to answer that, but essentially anyone who struggles to get the toe through the ball and, and blocks everything, that's where the toe up putter or heel down putter is going to be most useful. Um, Interesting. Okay. Mm, we'll see, that's, we'll see where the headway is, that's slightly heavier. Yeah. So we'll see where that is for head weight. This will be... Interesting. <laughs> uh, G430 Max, 12 degree, and the FX 140. Mm, I'll see one, one more, more, but I think that, that might have been quite hard work. Just think different models will have different frame weights. So whilst I change the weight in the back to try and make it lighter, okay. if it sits on the top end of where we want it to be, then it's just going to make it, like we saw with the irons, maybe we went bottom end heavy, it got stuck behind. Yeah, yeah, that's just not coming through. No. We'll get rid of that one. <laughs> so the ping heads, They've historically worked, they would tend to fit with a counterbalance shaft. They use a heavier head for more momentum, counterbalance to make it not swing heavy. Okay. Problem is your heavy head's a heavy head. Yeah. So um, it doesn't quite neutralize it. And so they very, very consistent products, but for, for you where it breaks down for you if the clubber gets late on you, that's where it just doesn't quite work for you. So I'm gonna get... It's going to switch that for a slight, just again to get make sure the head weight stays lighter. I'm just going to get the other model of that that yeah. I've got. So I'm going to go to a Cobra head. Yes, yeah, so I was saying earlier, the great thing is you've got is, is speed. If you've got speed, you can then get distance. Yeah. Um, and. So it's always good to have that. If you've got speed, you can then control it. It's control much it. harder if you're not naturally someone who creates speed. Yeah. Then the distance is much, much harder task. Whereas if you've got speed, the distance is in there. It's just getting the timing to get the get best everything out. together. Um, so I'd rather see someone who's fairly new to the game, who's wild and hits it a long <laughs> way. Because you can, you know, it's easier to rein it in than to force a bit of extra speed out of it, so. I think as well though, like, this maybe, I don't feel too bad kind of trying to generate the speed, but mm -hmm. when I'm actually on the course, is very different. Yeah, yeah, and actually, but I think from a fitting point of view, 
again, that's not necessarily the worst thing because this is where we want you to get to on the course. So yeah. It's not like you're standing and thrashing the hell out of it and, yeah. uh, and, and are all over the shop technique wise. Yeah. But actually, the swing line's still in a good place. Yeah. This is more where your swing will get to the more confident you get on the course. Yeah. And so that's it's such a key word, golden your confidence is building the confidence. It's so, yeah. it's so important. It's, okay. So this one's the Aerojet Max for those watching. So staying in the 12 degrees, just lofting it up to get that flight. We got high. <laughs> <laughs> Just got under it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> That's the highest one of the day. Yeah. <laughs> Still pretty straight. One for the stats, fairway hit. Mm. Still a little low. Okay. One more? I think one more. I think just to make sure that first, that one wasn't, wasn't. just a reaction to the yeah. first one going high. The tailor head still struck well. So. Okay. Okay, that's, that's a little low on spin. Yeah. So where the tail aid head was was sort of 1800 still strongish on spin but less low so that's just you can see where the run out's huge 43 yards but it's lost carry distance as a result so uh, it's something that the cobra heads have been yeah you know, i'd hoped it would pick the launch angle up a bit more yeah but they've been very good at keeping spin down but for you that just loses loses, loses carry so okay And this, these are things you would never know unless you came and had a fitting. Which is no, and, and, the, and the heads, the heads this year are. It's probably the best year I can think of, possibly ever for quality products yeah. across the board, brand wise. There's a, big, There's a um, lot of really good heads out there. Um, there was a big launch as well for pretty much all of them, wasn't it? For the brand new. Um, yeah, drive, it's so. almost like they've all kind of clubbed together going, right, we're going to make good product. Yeah, year. yeah. Because there's there's not a brand out there that's got anything that I would call weak. Yeah. It's just that they just suit different swing styles and players. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's some players that are going to really suit the tailor made head and the ping won't work, and some the ping will work really well, and the tailor made won't work based on how you deliver the club. Head. Yeah. But they're all good products this year um because i reckon a lot of people as well would just go out because they're they're obviously not cheap they're quite expensive and would just go out and pick, yeah. pick a brand because they like the brand rather than it actually suiting them more uh, yeah and then and, and this year with if you take any you know, driver heads how that last one you're hitting all the all the composite in the sole lighter yeah. ground lighter sole there's more separation of weight so actually how you deliver the head and where that mass in the head sits relative to strike points there's more variation <laughs> now than ever before yeah so where the spin performance goes varies more so you, you can buy a head which technically technically is a really good head but you could probably the first time in a number of years or pretty much ever you could buy something that's shorter than what you had before wow. although technically is a better head yeah because if the if the flight goes off Simon, I have another question. Uh, wheeled TKD again. Assuming Beth plays a lot after her first fitting, when would you advise? Sorry, switch cameras. Uh, when would you advise a checkup fit? Ooh, it's, it's an interesting one. Um, <laughs> when would I advise it? Uh, I mean, technically, there's not a bad, never a bad time to do a checkup because it's just either confirming everything's, like we're doing today, confirming everything's fine, or actually, right, there's now a tangible difference to be made. I'd probably say 
the, the only reason I'm hesitating is lots of, if I put a time frame on it, it's different for every it's player. Some yeah, players really say. ramp up the improvement um, and others, it takes longer yeah, to develop. Quite so, yeah. um, I think when you see a negative trend happening from a performance point of view that where something's been working well or or if you feel like you're swinging it better and the performance isn't there I'm not getting there that's the I point uh, yeah. you know, if you're for example if we let's say we do something with the driver that almost has it'll be set up so that the better you swing it the better it works if that's improving and say for example the irons are tailing off yeah and dispersion with the driver is getting better and you can commit to it more and it stays straight and then you start to kind of for example, pull the irons left or lose the strike on the irons. That's normally a sign that maybe you're developing out of where the irons have got. So for, for Beth in particular, where you're you're kind of wrapping, you know, on a real kind of upward trend. Yeah. Um, or certainly going to predict that anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Hopefully. It's, it's going to be, you're going to start to go beyond the capability of those irons. So you're, you know, what's likely to happen is your time is going to improve. Uh, as your technique improves, you can put more force into the clubs. Um, swing speeds might not change, but you're going to move the club on a simpler line, therefore you can be more efficient with it. So you're then going to need more to hit against because it's, it's then you need the weight there to time with. Yeah. So it's normally you'll start to overpower the clubs a little bit and then find you have to rein it back to get the best out of them. That's normally the marker is for someone like he's in Beth's position, that's when, that's the time to check. Um, to check up, yeah. Or kind of, you know, I guess on average, annually is not a bad, well, every, for someone going through a, a rate of improvement, 12 to 18 months isn't a bad time for okay. Um Unless there's a, a kind of stand there telling them, you go, you know what, this club used to work really well, others around it are working well, this is now not working well. And then it's more specific to that club. Yeah, for, an exper for an experienced player and someone who's played for a number of years, it, the, the things that are likely to change are going to be um, um, through, shall we say, kind of injury or age, just development and getting older and slower and weaker, um, or an injury changes the patterns of how you move. Uh, Paradigm X. Oh, okay. that was strange. Hmm. Good club speed. Okay, so I'm going to predict that that one was not going left because of the last one. <laughs> but but what's much. good there is how much launch angle there is there. Okay. So I, I think there's a bit of a Slight overcompensation because the last one sniped the left. The last one went left. Yeah. But again, swing line still neutral, still pretty square, just a little bit from the inside. So let's give that one more. Much more launch on that, though. Mm, not strike as well. Okay, no. let me go back. That's just not quite getting into the back of the ball, right? So, I'm just going to put that clear back on, just to kind of, kind of like a normalise with it and... See if it's just me. Well, I, that one, fair, the weight one, my, is like, deeper. Consist my consistency probably isn't like that amazing yet, because obviously I'm still learning other it's, stuff. Well, so. but again, it, it's, it's something that's being realistic about where your game's at and saying, okay, well, they're going to be the odd, slightly funky swing. Look, yeah. we, all, we all do it, right? you're playing, <laughs> you know, playing yesterday, I put a couple of swings on during the round where I think, who was that? <laughs> yeah. But um, so it, it happens, you look at the best players in the world, they all do it. Yeah. So, um, and, and it's, it's a case of just not judging yourself too harshly on it. It's hard not to. Yeah, it's hard Because not to. we all want to improve, so you think, what did I do wrong? And sometimes the answer is just, Put a bad sequence on. Yeah. Now I don't know whether it's a placebo because it it's is. something that, that you're that you're used to, but you've just moved that way better. Now, okay, yes, a little low, but an angle attack a little bit down, but the yeah. strike and the dispersion pattern are there straight away, and, and it can be. And so much of this game is is 
Just completely breathe. mental. Just try um, again. But so much of it is actually about feeling comfortable over the ball. So when we're you know, fitting any one of any level, you've got to like what's on the bottom because it, it sets a positive mental state stood over the ball. Yeah, you definitely you definitely move that with more freedom. It's weird, isn't so it? So a little bit to the right, but it's yeah. a little more. So that one just lost a little bit of ball speed through yeah, strike point. Okay. Let's see you hit one more of that, and then I'll, I'll one more of that, and then I'll give you this back again just to compare those weights. So technically, that shaft's just a little bit stronger structurally and a little bit heavier. Okay, good ball speed. Just came out a little bit low. Yeah. Speed. Okay. So let's just give you that back. So in the main, as a kind of a general thing that I'd be looking to see, I'd, I'd much rather see the ball coming out a little low, but with good ball speed and, and good timing, yeah. because then that's just a little bit of angle of attack. A little bit. The more, the stronger you swing it, the higher it's going to go. The more you relax into it, you'll work underneath and flight it a little bit more anyway. And some of that is just a little bit of technical work of hitting up on it slightly. Yeah. Um, but low means it's going forwards. So I'd rather see a slightly flatter flight and a strong contact than a high flight and weak contact. Again, good speed. Mm, okay. One more? One more would be great, yeah, thank you. Lasered it. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> it's interesting because I think where that is, yeah, is so if we kind of put a kind of a window of where your cape is, you're right at the top end of that. Mm. So if you progress any more, you're going to overpower that. Yeah. If we, so you, you could look at it one or two. You could say actually at the moment it's fine, but the more confident you get, it's not. I I it's I not that. fine. That one gives you something that you can develop with a little bit more. I think I feel more, I don't know, even though obviously that was... I'll look at the raw weight of this. No, that's, it's, it's straight, but you can kind of see with the, with the current one that there's that little bit of hang, not, not hanging back on it, but it's just, just it's almost like you, you, pat, you, you steer a little bit through yeah, the ball yeah. rather than just keep going with going. it. Um, and it's a marginal thing. It's not massive, massive differences, but it, it could be the difference between, I say, being rewarded for burning. Yeah, so actually it's about 15 grams heavier in total. Now, some of it's at the top end, and some of it's actually grip weight. So we're probably looking at five or six grams on the shaft weight. Yeah. So 15% on the shaft weight. Um, but it's potentially the difference between being able to continue being positive and, and committing to the driver's swing. And, and then being forced into having to back off it a little bit. Oh, sorry, mouse has gone. Uh, there we go. Thought, thought the mouse had just died on me. <laughs> oh, that was not good. Oops, I had to do that then, didn't I? <laughs> that's just classic. Straight. I'm like, I love it, and then yeah. <laughs> mess it up this time. That's just golf being golf, <laughs> isn't it? The moment you think, yeah, I've, I've got this sport, yeah, got it. I know what I'm doing here. I don't know, it's so weird, so isn't it? Just let your arms free up a little bit. Just, so don't think how, just two turns and a swish. Okay. It's that thing of, don't try to not too hard to make it work. Yeah. We know the swing line's good. We know that's all in place. Just literally just free it up. And that's often when things go wrong in the course, we end up trying too hard to fix something. A little bit more on it. And I think that that's, it's kind of a bit of a, um, 
I think a bit of a measure of where that right right now mm. is a little more exacting on timing, but when you get it right, you've got a bit of extra ball speed in there. Yeah. You know, so you're know, putting a you know, 115, 115 ball speed. You know, 78, you're still getting a 112, 115 ball speed, but it, it asks you to be a little more positive with it. Yeah. And so right now, that one allows you to be a little bit less. Less. It, it lets you kind of, for a better phrase, it lets you get away with a little bit more. But then the better you swing, does that then start to, does that actually help you kind of Progress move on well, a little yeah. bit? And I think for someone like you who's working on your game and is yeah. putting the effort in, I've been inclined to say, yeah, get, almost challenge you a little bit with those. We can see with the arms, it was a, it was a backward step to push yeah. the weight on. The, you know, the good hits with those have been, you know, still been very, very square. Um, it's just that if you get a little bit out of sync, that little bit of extra weight just pulls you offline a touch. And I'm obviously probably very used to hitting that as well. So uh, I think going back to it from you know, swing something heavier, it, it's easier to move. You kind of smooth it away. Yeah. But there's a there's a limit to how much you if you continue to improve, then there's a limit to how much use that actually is. It's, so yeah. is it then a case of right? Let's have something that that takes you into that next step onto it. Yeah. Um, so if you're looking at kind of yardages, like three. Longest hits with both is only two yards in it. Yeah. Um, so it's not like there's, and that, that was nice to hit, came out a little bit flatter. Um, but I, I just wonder whether you're at the threshold of where that's... Of the, where that is. Yeah, and so I, do, I kind of feel is. like that as well yeah. when I'm using it. Mm -hmm. Like as if I'm not going to get anything else from it. I don't know, which is strange. Is that a weird <laughs> yeah. thing uh, to say? No, or? no you know, it, it, it can be... I don't think so. I think it's just one of those where I think... You, we all know we've put a good swing on it. Yeah, and if yeah. it sometimes doesn't feel like that gets a reward, yeah. does it go offline, you kind of go, th then like it then suits to kind of pull back a little bit. Yeah. Um, and say for where you naturally have speed, I'd rather give you something that almost makes you go, right, go, you know, go be a bit more positive with it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I would kind of to say, I think I'd rather challenge you a bit to keep pushing and keep mm. improving with it, because especially now, you know, the weather's improving, it's warmer, you're gonna, your body's gonna move more efficiently because you yeah. haven't got five layers of clothes on. Um, you, that potentially just kind of contains a little bit and forces you to have to back off it very slightly rather than, I want to say, it's challenge like you to it. get it right. Yeah. Um, so I think that's gonna have a little more value on the driver because I, I can't see any, where you're committing through the swing and freeing it up. I can't see any where, there's the odd one that goes, Right, but actually it's more so with the irons. This one, we're seeing it, if anything, these where you're getting the face squared through and it's going left. Yeah, something. left, yeah. So, again, that little bit more gives you something to hit against and then the more efficiently you move through, up the higher it goes. Yeah. So, I think I would I would go with that. Um, but I'm also going to see if Taylor May can give us one of those heads where we can loft it up a little bit. <laughs> we'll see. So, if not, the, the clear head is working well for you. The ball speed efficiency is good. Yeah, it's um, The spin performance is good. Um, which actually just shows that it, it, it's quite um, I say binary with these where they're, they're, it's kind of good slash bad um, in that if the weight sits in the wrong place, you just won't get that consistency of spin and launch and the contact won't feel solid. Um, and, and like I said, you can hear in the con contact is very solid. You can see in the ball speeds you're getting a 148 efficiencies. And you're pushing 140, 150 efficiencies. It's coming off the face well. Um, I'll put a fresh piece on, but I think it definitely needs the extra weight on yeah. as well. Um, so, but I think, yeah, a little bit more weight in that just gives you something to develop with rather mm. than almost sort of, it's not holding you back, but I don't think there's progression in it. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. you're at the limit of Limit, yeah. So. Mm. I'm just going to measure a couple of bits on that. Yeah. But yeah, length's good. Yeah, being at 44 inches, I think that's a mm -hmm. nice place. Don't need to change that. Uh, Balance is going to be a little bit you know, similar. Like a static balance is similar. It's just it's upping the the weight and a little bit the structural strength of the shaft, just to make it work with your swing strength, really. Okay. Yeah. It's a bit flexible. Yeah, I mean, it, they are. 
they are a, I mean, part of the thing is they are a, a lighter, softer shell, so lighter, softer shell often, so you can kind of see it wobble a little you bit. Will, yeah. And whilst that doesn't, doesn't actually negatively affect the flight and the performance, it can make you think, oh, this is really weak. So it's almost more how you approach the club. Club, yeah, yeah. And if it feels loose, then it might feel wayward, so less likely to commit to it. So it's more how the sensation of the movement in the club affects how you can commit through the swing, yeah. rather than actually the, the club does not flip the toe flip over. The toe. Yeah, it just yeah, doesn't yeah. work that way. It works, you know, the shaft loads that way at the start of the downswing and then works underneath. Mm. So there's a little bit of rotation, but it's, it's not going to turn a straight shot into a hook. No, okay. So, uh, right. I'll put a fresh bit on later on that will stay on oh, before you. Thank you. So, fair way, Woods. Oh, no. <laughs> you, Do we have you to? You knew they were coming at some point. So. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be a disaster, like actually very bad. If it is, then we can go to the hybrids and we can look at these. I think we should. <laughs> Skip this bit. <laughs> You're getting out of that lightly. Oh. Okay. And it can be, I'll give again, it a will. With, with, you know, with where your game is now, the most important thing is, whether it be a fairway or a hybrid, yeah. is getting something that's a consistent distance. distance. You know, if, you're going to use driver off the tee yeah. most of the time. Um, but, and we'll kind of hit a couple with this, then with the more lofted one, and then we'll get the kind of the fairways and the hybrids, just a, a bit of a variety of shots with them, just to see where each one sits. But, um, you know, these are the longest club that you're hitting off the ground. There's the least margin of error with them, so they are a hard club. Just kind of do that. Would, would that, like the first, when I say the first miss, I mean like, like that first shot, would that be a shot you'd see when I use a them. smothery left one? Yeah. Okay. Because they are the, of the woods, they're the lightest. Or that one is the lightest. Is it? Okay. The, uh, the five wood is a little less head light. So that you could see, for me watching you swing, straight away I can see that like just a, happened. It just, it just went. So it didn't drop in like drop we're working in. with the driver. I think I find it harder to do that with these. Yeah, def definitely looking at that, you can see your swing wise, your, there's a lot more of that, that going on. So you're overpowering the bottom end of it. And so what, because it's not dropping in the plane, you, you, you've got to maneuver it. So as you start down, so you put the power on it gets out of plane you've then got to reroute it because if you don't it's just doing gonna that, do that you're yeah. gonna, either going to miss the ball or smother it so you've got to find, find the strike it. with the face again yeah, so that's what I'm doing. this one's a little bit heavier in the head okay. so it'd be interesting to compare with this one so this one's the five wood so the swing weight's up by over a swing weight point between the three wood and the five wood Okay, so much, much better from a flow point of view yeah. than the three. You could see there was actually something to hit the ball with on yeah. that one. Okay. Just didn't hit it great. It, it's def whilst not as clean a strike as you would like, there's definitely much more potential in this club to be useful than the other one in its current form. I don't know, I just don't... Are you, when you're swinging these? Yeah. Clearly, there's a confidence issue with them for one. Um, are, what are you, are you trying to do something different with the swing to, or are you looking at it going, I just don't like this club. I'm not looking forward to hitting it. I just think because it's longer, I just can't. Just don't know what to do with it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's fair. Yep. Yeah. I'll see one more swing with this. So um, play this one like. Let me see if you. Just swing like you swing a driver. Just you know, okay. free it up. Don't worry about how. Just make a nice freed up swing. Doesn't matter where it goes in here. Okay. So much more positive move, and again, it's got that little bit of a flip left. Yeah. On it. So okay. And I'll go to one of the hybrids. There's a distinct chance that with the so whilst the driver's longer. Yeah. It's a much bigger head, and it's on a tee. So you're. <clears throat> accuracy that you've got to have to put club head on the back of the ball. You've got no vertical margin of error on this because yeah, yeah. you haven't got a 
you've got a, a no half, half the height of head and no T. So you can't go under it and catch a high in the face and loop it. Um, and if you get over the top of it, you top it into the ground rather than thin it and it still go forward. So yeah. with the length of shaft, it may just be that right now it's asking technically that bit too much of you to get confident with them. I think that's what it is. That will become, you know, again, Hopefully. with the speed you've got and where you, like that last swing line was half a degree into out, it's dead square again. Um, so absolutely will be something that will not be an issue down the line. It's whether right now it's a, it's hard to get the confidence with them to, to pick them up without thinking it's going to go wrong. Yeah, so much to watch you swing it, a much tidier action, almost yeah. like you go, okay, I know what I'm doing I'm with this chill, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So much more like an iron, That's how much I feel. More like an iron swing. Yeah. Um, so pretty much exactly the same angle of attack, um, down angle of attack, which the smaller head and the hybrid suits. Um, like the irons, you can see that came through nicely in sync. So as you go from driver to fairway to hybrid to irons, the head weight gradually goes up. Okay. And shaft weight's gonna be pretty similar, certainly through the top end of the bag. Um, actually into the irons as well, but that straightaway is squared up and uh, so it just looked like you knew what you were doing with yeah, it. Yeah, I just have yeah. confidence in this yeah. for yeah. some reason. Weird, isn't it? Well, you can see it works. So yeah. a bit like the irons where we went back to those, you could see how easy that was to square up. Yeah. Um, and that one again, you could see you didn't kind of raise a head, so you didn't get a change in posture. Everything just, it just did a really nice swing, collected yeah. it. But they say you, you just, you look like you knew what was going to happen with it. Good amount of spin on that as well. Okay, so got a little bit behind the ball, yeah, but, but, but still, you know, square down the line. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to see, yeah. I think hybrids, for me, I like the irons and let's not mess around with something that doesn't need it. If you're okay. confident with them, they work well. Yeah. Let's see if I can do something with one of Okay. These. Biggest challenge ever. <laughs> I like that. That was a look of, yeah, go on then. Yeah. Oh. And so. You can try them. Um, so I'm going to go to a head that's got slightly shallower face. Okay. So Maybe that is what I find. These have actually got actually. quite a tall face to them. So in terms of hmm. going to the ping of G430, you can see the height of face difference between this one and this one. So with the Kaleas, there's actually quite a lot of head kind of sat over the top of the ball. Hmm. Um, and if going shallow in the head, it looks friendlier. That hopefully, might make sense actually. Hopefully, it'll mean you'll feel like you can get it airborne and flighted. And we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm just going to have this natural hate for all fairway woods. <laughs> I can understand why. Right, it's a bit like you wouldn't, you wouldn't ask a 20 handicapper to hit a forearm. Yeah. Or rarely would. Yeah. So it's understandable that it's not the most comfortable club in the world to use. Um, so let's see how that, I may, I'm just going to worry, I might change out this shaft. Yeah, the shaft's a little bit tip weighted. I'm just going to, yeah, let's change that. It's just a little bit bottom heavy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so long, longest club that you're hitting without a tee. So, it's not a massive surprise that they're not, don't kind of fill you with confidence. Yeah. But your, your swing is more than good enough to get them working well. Um, you know, there's, if you were six, seven degrees out to win, face seven, 10 degrees, um, then, okay, there's more technical issues with the swing. I think this is just a case of the more you play, the more organized your, you will stay more balanced. So, your synchronization will tighten up because you're not moving around as much. Therefore, yeah. the delivery of the head's going to get more consistent. Therefore, True. you're going to strike it cleaner more. So it's a bit of a snowball effect in that respect, I think. Okay, let's see. 
Yeah, just just grip it just below that white mark. Below the white mark? Just on the bottom edge of it, yeah. Um, so you go on G430 head, um, which is same loft as Beth's um, uh, current three wood. Uh, uh, yeah. And VRTX red. Mm, that looks a little, that still looks a little bottom end hard work. Okay. So that had that element of dropping in behind. Yeah. So. So it's because of your hips. It does look a lot friendlier though. Yeah. So because that. your hips kick, it's quite obvious when it drops behind. Okay. Because you can tell. Not doing that. <laughs> so. I'll actually go back to that. Okay. Just thought another shaft that I can use. Yeah. So going Vista Pro 45. So you're keeping that shaft weight just under the 50 gram mark. Yeah, it's still okay. Yeah, I'm gonna get there's a actually there's a ping shaft I can get. Okay. That's probably gonna be a better balance than that. Fine line with woods between right and too heavy. So, uh, right, just grab that shaft. It's gonna be alpha quick in the 45. That was not good. <laughs> I can't. Can't do it. No. This is my favourite club, 100%. Find a particular weight for the soul. For so, someone who's just starting out, mm. what would you then say someone comes straight to you yeah. and they go, right, I want I have no idea. What what do I do? How would, okay. what uh, would you suggest Same sort of then? principles. Um, it's just you don't need quite the same amount of coverage of clubs. Okay. So uh, I think getting um, getting a, and it's actually like a half set. So in a perfect example of when that's happened before, we had a, a German lady who's six foot three. Yeah. He wanted, so there's no point. I can't use men's stuff. It's too heavy. Lady stuff's too short. Yeah. Um, but I want to find out if I actually enjoy the game or not. Yeah. Um, so um, we started off building couple of irons and a, I think it was a hybrid, um, just to give us something that was relevant for her to use um, and so work out whether she enjoyed the game or not. Um, but yeah, I like think it's, you, you don't need, yeah. yeah, I mean, something to get off the, well, get off the tee with. I mean, drivers are long and hard to use. So sometimes it's a case of just don't, don't go overboard in terms of what you get. You know, full sets are, most, most girls score better with a half set, yeah. quite frankly. Um, so actually, you can always add to something. You don't have to go all in straight away. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the worst thing you can do early on, like particularly juniors growing up, is to go too heavy. So okay. 
For you and where you're at now, it's quite different in that your techniques are the point where you can challenge yourself a bit and you can work towards something that, that's slightly, um, slightly more of a test. Um, but, but actually, early on in someone's sort of playing career, it just makes it hard to improve. <laughs> ah, it's too light. Too light? <laughs> too light, it's just flipped it. Ah. Um, so, um, <laughs> So whereas light's easier to move, so when you haven't got the technique and you're starting from sort of scratch, yeah. then, then light is easier to control. Um, right. Not too light. Not too light. Well, I, I guess <laughs> if, you're, if, you're complete, if you're starting completely from scratch, then I guess it, it's, it's so different player to player because you get, you, know, you get, yeah. Oh, no, need, a, need a thread for that. But does it depend um, on like general strength as well then? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, um, but mobility is also quite key. So you can okay. get someone with a lot of strength and no mobility. Yeah. And if you just put them in, so we've had rugby players in the past where I put them in graphite because they, cause they, oops, they haven't got the range of motion. You know, they're less, less flexible. They can't get that range. So to, to accelerate, they're accelerating from there. And if you pull it go heavy, it just, it doesn't come with you. So we put them in like a 70 gram graphite. And then there are other, other players who have you know, a, lot of, a lot of range of motion and not necessarily strong, but the weight then helps them to drop it in and time it. So it, it, it's so unique to how each player moves, moves. and del yeah, delivers yeah. a club that there, there's no one generalization. So if someone's really strong and hasn't got much movement, they need a lighter, not always. Definitely, maybe. Maybe. It, it's one of the, sadly, it's just one of those answers. Um, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, I need stiff, extra stiff. So I just feel like maybe he's going wrong. <laughs> well, I mean, but I think we've been, as we were saying, we've been conditioned to think that flex is the be all and end all where it really isn't. Um, weight's the, the main thing. So yeah. the danger of going stiff is you go really heavy. And then people think that the stiffness is the harshness in the club. It's not, it's just there's a lot of mass there. So you get nothing, you can feel like a poker because you've got massive amount of dead weight there. Um, but even on toys, you think like driver shafts, most of them are using 65 gram shaft now, but it used to be 75, 80. That's better, because it helps develop the speed, so. Okay. That felt quite nice. <laughs> uh, Ascent 40 red and the 430. I think that, it's a bit like with the driver, if you where you where you're comfortable with the way the clear head sits. Yeah. It's easier to then forget about the club and just swing. If you're less worried about getting the ball airborne or if it looks a friendly ahead, then that that in itself is also going to help confidence. Okay, just roll it over a little bit. I'll see one more with that. So that one just came out of yeah. a little bit. So posturally just came up a little bit, which then just yeah. rolled the face. Sorry, my swing was very bad then. Don't know what I just did. <laughs> don't, please don't apologise. Uh, <laughs> no need whatsoever. <laughs> give you, give you the, the old breakfast ball on that one. But it also goes to show, you, like with this one, the good swings. You know that first swing with it, path point naught point naught, and face was only one degree closed. It's a really, really good swing. Okay, I'm gonna change off a little bit more. So again, potentially with mm. that, we can see that. Your best swing, great result. Yeah. Is it just asking a little bit too much of you? Maybe. And ultimately, with where your, uh, where put that? with where the hybrid shot was, it's absolutely fine to say, you know what, fairwood's not quite yet. Yeah, yeah. might not just be there. Yeah. Need to work on that a bit more, maybe. It's, but I do agree that the this does look way more intimidating yeah. than that does when yeah. i like step behind that it doesn't look as I yeah know. little little bits of it with you know, that face is all also but it's hard to pick out there's no real definition that one you've got the paint they've been quite clever and they've painted just the bottom groove so you yeah. see all the face you see all the loft um whereas that the tail away there's just a you know clean you know, it's a clean face it's not like they, you can't see the face but you, it just kind of blends into one and if you get a bit of um 
where it's a sort of a silver face, you get a bit of reflection of the grass. It goes green. You don't. You get a bit of a green reflection. Yeah, you yeah. then don't see the face quite as much. So, yeah. Um, and that being taller, it, 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 you've got to get potentially feel as you've got to get more of the club under the ball. Whereas that one, you're just seeing the bit that's going to get in the get bottom. In the bottom. So, yeah. Um, okay. All these all these little Let's things can it. help for confidence side of things. But it's why ping have always been very popular fairway wood head. Yeah, they've they've okay. done that pattern on the face for quite a while now. They've done and it they've well. Generally had a shallower face profile than most. Just gonna... I want 142. I feel like I'm not hitting it right now. Yeah, okay. yeah maybe Let's I just need to. So this is the Acro, the I1 142 series. So. One more. I think, yeah, maybe I just don't like them. I feel like I'm like lifting, I don't know. I think what it is, is that, so with the driver of a tee, you've got you know, that much depth of club face to hit it with, so you can get, there's quite a bit of height margin yeah. of error. As so I fair it off the ground, you've got about a third, you know, half of the face height, but then no margin of error from a strike point of view. I think where, where at the moment, technically what's happening is your hips kick through, there's a little bit of a rise out rise, of it, yeah. which on the driver's fine because you're sweeping it off the tee. With a fairway off the ground, it, it's one, it can just change where you bottom out, but it just then rolls the face a little bit. So when you get it right. It has a good outcome, but. It has a really nice, okay, that was quite low. So I'd probably, if you were gonna stick with anything fairway, the higher loft at the moment keeps the flight. Yeah. But you can see technically you are able to deliver it really well. Yeah. But it's probably something that right now, from a confidence point of view, is going to make it a bit volatile to yeah. go, oh, am I really going to want to take this out? Yeah. It may be worth saying, okay, well, you, you put them on a low tee, and, yeah. or the high, the high off the five wood. Start with that one off a low tee, just to build a bit of confidence, confidence. because you then got, you know, if you, you tee it up a little bit, you've then got an extra bit of margin of error on strike height. Because I think um, it's a little bit, probably a little bit club set up, but a little bit just, Starting to kind of trust that you that the, you're going to get I a good result out it, of it. Yeah. Because I could watch you swing and go, look, the swing line's absolutely fine until yeah. I'm blue in the face. If you stand again, I'm not feeling this. <laughs> then that that little bit of a kind of mentally, you're on the back foot already. So yeah. I think if you can just say when you're practicing, just put them on a low tee and build a little bit of confidence with yeah, them. Yeah, that's a good idea. That'll then carry over to the course. On the high loft, you've got that much extra. <laughs> where did I put it? Um, yeah, you've got that much. You've got those three degrees extra loft. If you think on the driver, the measured loft we're looking for, as it mm. says 12 and a half, is more like 14 and a half. Yeah. So actually, for most of the time, if a dri on the driver to the first fairway wood, you'd be looking at about a five degree gap. So to go to 20 on the five wood actually makes more sense, more sense. than maybe using the, the three wood at 17 in the class, Clear series. So that's going to give you that little bit more launch and spin. So you're going to see ball flight more easily. This one actually swings better as well. Um, but I think just practice with it off a low tee to get a bit of confidence, trust in it. Because I think that then is a little bit of a snowball effect with yeah. that. And then once you get a bit of, bit of trust that actually you can use them, because I think it's more kind of internal trust. And, cause I, you know, I can see where the technique is and it's fine. Um, but you've got to stand over the club believing you're going to get a good result it, out yeah. of it. Um, because the most successful word in golf is don't. So like you always hit it if you don't want to put it somewhere, yeah. then your attention's drawn to where you don't want it to go and you'll, you'll go there. So I think that's just a case of a little bit of time with the club and develop a little bit of confidence by just practice with it off a tee yeah. rather than if you put it on the ground, then it, it's, it's good or bad. Yeah. Um, and proportionally, bad's going to win because it's really hard to get the great results out of it. Yeah. But by putting on a tee, you're giving yourself more margin of error. And so just build a little trust in that way. Start and then we can have another look at it once you start to feel more comfortable with it. Yeah, and yeah. I think we'll see you know, whether it's that ascent shaft or something similar, start, a bit like the driver giving you something more to hit against as you get more positive with it. But we can see how well 
the hybrid and the irons work. Yeah. So you've got a club which is really reliable as a fairway club there yeah. and kind of on course just just um, default to that for now. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and just do a bit of practice off a tee. Yeah. And I think that, that'll then naturally feed in as I think you start to see better results with it. You'll then feel a little less, you know, then in this case you practice it off the ground, it'll be less intimidating, it'll be less, oh God, it's this club again. Yeah. Um, but the extra loft on this will give you the flight. So Perfect. I would do that and then we'll have another, once, once you start to see that Once I'm like, I can we'll use it now. Can use yeah. 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 Um, so but I think that's the better way. I can, see, I can see where we go with it, but now's a little, yeah, yeah. I think now would be a, a massive leap of faith on your part. <laughs> yeah. I think we need to kind of just kind of get a bit of confidence going yeah, in there I first. Agree. So, but Thank yeah, you. hybrid irons, good. So don't mess around with those. But for now, don't yeah. worry about the three wood. I, mean, I don't think there's enough loft on it, quite yeah. frankly, at the moment um, to make it a club that you're going to see enough ball flight out of right now. Yeah. So uh, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to just put, no, yeah, that one's yours. Yeah. Of course, this one doesn't unscrew, so. No, it doesn't, it's stuck. So I think with the, with the lofts you've got there, the five at 27, uh, the four hybrid at 24, yeah, 23. Um, so again, you've got plenty of loft there to see the flight on it, which again is where that worked well. Uh, and the loft graduations through the irons down to pictures, that works well. I think it's down the bottom end, we can give you something that's a lot more versatile around the greens. So yeah. I'm gonna move the track mount forward because Otherwise, it'll hit the top and bounce back at you. So we'll go off the, um, oop. thank you very much. And we'll just go off that front mat for the wedges. So and I think, again, you know, a bit like the rest of the bag, there's no point over, over cluttering the bottom part of the bag. I think getting yeah. a sandwich that's just more versatile um, and allows you to get strike a little bit more cleanly is gonna be a key thing. So we don't need to throw loads of wedges down the bottom. Okay. Um, Right. Okay. Let's go. I'll um, I'll just check the alignment on the track, man. Yeah. Lost it levels off. Great, lovely. So I think with this, just a just a few swings like kind of comfortable pitching, so like kind of half three quarter shots rather half than a full swing. Shots. So okay. probably like a kind of a forty odd yard, something like that. Okay. If I can. Oh, that wasn't good. That's the link stinger, yeah? Yep. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would, and from a strike point of view, would, would there tend to be, like, would a little bit thin be a miss? Would a little bit... Yeah, I mean, thin, would the thin, yeah. Be the, okay. thin, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's see one more of those. So just actually, so just a slightly shorter shot. So that was okay. 53 through the air. Um, okay. So just kind of like a half shot. Half. I'm not very good at these. <laughs> <laughs> half shots and me don't work for some reason. Okay, so this is where potentially a little bit more weight should help, should particularly with the shorter okay. swing. So where you're generating the, the extra kind of acceleration and kick with the swing with the irons and hybrids, we want the club to come with you. Okay. Where that quietens off into the wedges and, and you make less of a rotation, less of acceleration, you're then using the weight to drop you into the back of the ball. That might be where, again, if, it la if the lightweight allows you to flick at it a little bit, that the thin comes in. Okay. And why a fuller swing will be okay, but at the moment you rein it back, back. there's kind of nothing to, Feel. feel yeah yeah so i'll put um put a heavier wedge together for you mm. 
It's also fairly short. I mean, it's, it's not really short, mm. but it is three quarters of an inch shorter than your pitch wedge, which is quite a bit. Okay. Mm, so, again, I'll just put a little bit of, just a marker to grip. This one's more of a standard length, so. So going up to 60 odd grams from 45, 47. So. Okay. I'm just going to make sure this hasn't been bent to a weird angle. So do you two play together much? Or, or is that uh, is that sensitive from a relationship point of view? <laughs> yeah. I've seen many relationships ruined by uh, being on a golf ruined course. Ruined by together. golf. <laughs> so I've gone with the Glide 4.0, just to keep a little bit of perimeter weighting, a little bit of technically a bit of forgiveness to it, but a more kind of specialist design wedge. So that's a little half shot. I think first. Yeah, so straight away the club takes you down to the ball. Yeah. So that's where the light weight on your full swings is really good, but then when you pare it down, you've got less of that kick in the hips, less acceleration, the weight then takes you into the strike a little bit better. See, it wasn't you. <laughs> Yeah, so immediately on that second one, you, you can see you start to free it up a little bit. You're not, you're not having to, what you're not having to do is you're not having to put the club on the back of the ball. Yeah. You can just turn onto it and collect it. Okay, I'm going to push that a little bit more. But both of those are down exactly the same channel. So yeah. from a shot point of view, they've just tracked identically. So then again, you, it's all that input-output feedback. And you start to see the same shot happening. Then you go, okay, I know what I'm doing here yeah. rather than... Why do I thin one, bat one, pull one, you know, cut one under and go too short? Um, and the answer is you're just having to over-regulate what you're doing with the club. Okay. Push it very slightly heavier. I'm going to go to something that's got a slightly heavier tip end to it, just to see. Yeah. I feel like with this one, I couldn't even picture a half swing, which okay. is really yeah, strange. Yeah. Yeah. So some of it is what, when you're going to the half shots, it requires on almost some knowing where the club it is a little bit more to gauge how far back you've gone. Yeah. And, uh, I think it's a bit like turning the club around. Once, the, once it goes above your hands, there's nothing there to... Feel. Feel, so you yeah. can't go how far back have I gone and then if it's not rooting itself back down you've got to then put the club on the back of the ball which so if you're making a big rotation then it kind of follows your body turn a bit more whereas the moment it becomes a shorter move well you can start to over manipulate it a little bit so it ends up being kind of a bit stiff stiff yeah yeah so just a couple of questions and they're kind of related to uh, grip weight. Uh, first mm -hmm. one, um, I'm thinking of having a grip change, but the current ones are 67 grams, and the ones I might like to try are 43 grams. Mm. Would I need my clubs altered due to this change in weight? But if I follow up with the other question, uh, how much, if any, how much, if any, would swing weight be affected going from a standard grip to a mid-size grip? Um, so on the second one, it depends on which mid-size. Um, uh, sonar. Not a lot. Um, so the sonar mid-size are 57 grams, the stands are 53. Um, so that really, that's minimal. So like half a swing rate point. Um, but if you go from 60, gram, uh, 50, 60 grams to 40 odd grams, 67, 67 to 40, then um, I would advise don't do it. <laughs> um, it that vast difference. So 67 to 43, that's 25 grams, that's five swing rate points. But it, it's just gonna feel incredibly club head heavy if you, if you lighten the grip end that much. Um, 
So I'm assuming the 43 grams are win or something like that, which is, which is very, very light. Um, and yeah, that'll have a really massive effect on how the club swings. Yeah, just starting to drag it over a little bit. I went a bit more bottom end weighted. That's just starting to turn over just a touch more. Okay. Um, yeah, it's something the grip weight's something that we've in fittings done a, have been a lot more conscious of um, over the last couple of years. So a lot of mid sizes go from like standard grips around 50 to 53 grams or 48 to 53 grams, um, and there are only about three or four mid size grips that stay. Up sub 60, most of them go up to 64, 65, which doesn't sound like a lot of a change, but is a really big, yeah. uh, has, a, has a big effect. Cause it was a dry tack mid-size yeah. uh, to align plus four. Okay, yeah, so the align plus four, because the extra material on the bottom hand in a mid-size is a yeah, 64, 65 gram grip plus, um, just a lot of material. And the problem then is to keep the same feel for the head, you've got to add four or five, three or four grams to the head. So you're putting 15 grams over a standard grip, extra dead weight in the club, which if you did that in shaft weight, it's massive. Yeah. Um, but you're loading up the top and the bottom end. So um, it will, yeah, it, it just will. Sorry? Would you have a new grip How would you someone determine whether they would? So side, how it fits your hands. Um, so your kind of scale of hands. So. A lot of it, so looking at breath, finger length looks relatively long, I think. Um, that's the gloved hand I'm judging on. Um, but so kind of, it's diagonal wingspan really because of, of the, how your hand wraps around the grip. So you've got to look at how long that part of, you know, that part of the hand is there for bottom hand thickness. Um, and then feel, a lot of it's, you know, whether you like a certain feel, something more coarse um, that kind of grips your hands a bit more or a softer, tackier grip. Or if grip weight's important, then you might be restricted on what you like. Yeah, that's, that's back as a square, a start line. Yeah. Not dragging over the left. Um, so a little bit open on that one, but the last one was catapulting shut. So the problem with that is, if you start to put a bit of speed into it, it's gonna flip, flip even more. Touch behind the ball, but straight. So you kind of you, you get away. With it. Just a slightly longer swing. L slightly longer? Just a little bit longer, yeah. Or a three quarter swing of that. I'm going to give you a little bit more weight on the head. Just okay. a little bit. But again, it's down that same channel as yeah, the other yeah. shots earlier on, which is nice. So. Yeah, the, the grip's important because it's your only point of contact with the club. So it, it sets if it's you get tension pretty much going from your hands to your forearm across the chest and it kind of locks out. So, um, yeah, it's important. Just stuck 10 grams, they counterbalance the club by 10 grams. So, but you think oh, it's just a bit of rubber. But it makes a difference. Yeah, yeah. Everything, everything's got a knock on effect somewhere. Yeah, and you think you know, standard to a jumbo. You know, some of the lambkin grips go to seventy-two grams. Sorry, so. guys, just bear with us. We've just uh, lost a couple of the cameras. We are still here. <laughs> I hope. Bear with me. Hmm. That feel better with a bit more head weight or just different? Um, or not very different? <laughs> I don't know. Give it one more. Yeah. I'm going to go back. I think I slightly prefer the other one. Yeah. Slightly. Without the weight. Mm. I think I kind of agree. We'll see. I think the cameras are ready to go home for the weekend. I think we're 
Got them back up and running now. <laughs> Apologies for that. Yeah, I mean, that one went a little left, but it, yeah. it, it was a cleaner strike. More spin as well. Okay, I'm going to have a look at the, um, I just want to look at the sold strike. Okay. Um, so this is where the, Ooh. the only time we use this nasty bit of plastic. Um, so I'm just going to put a bit of tape on the bottom that'll show us on the kind of front to back where the strike is. So if we take into account where, you know, the width wow. of that yeah. versus that, and yeah. then the amount of angle. So there's still a decent bit of back edge there, but because it's wider, it has a bigger effect. So let me show that to camera as well. So the amount of sole shape on the Kalia one versus the ping, which still has a reasonable bit of bounce on the back edge. There's just a lot of club you've got to get into, get the, yeah, yeah. into the turf. And if you're, you hit down a little bit, which is good, um, but it just means, again, you haven't got, what you want the bounce to do is to kind of help take the club into the back of the ball. If you get it a little bit behind it, it can kind of scoot it forward. Okay. Um, whereas with your current one, you, you almost have to get your hands in front and trap Trip down, down onto it. Yeah. So this will just show us front to back where your Ooh. main strike point is. It's a lot softer than it looks, this okay. thing. So. I'm like, I don't want to break this club. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. So just that pretty neutral, that same swing actually, that same kind of three-quarter shot would be perfect. Okay. Stuff. Nice turn through. Yeah, it's a bit of an interesting <laughs> sensation. But. It's like, what have I done? <laughs> so with that, we can see actually what's nice there. It's using pretty much most of that middle section. Okay. So you've got strike across a reasonable bit of the sole. Okay. So what that shows is it's 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 in that it's using the majority of it rather than on that one. It's going to be more towards the back, back edge. End. So I'll show the. So is that camera on? Yeah. So, so it's actually it's got a kind of a wide-ish mark. So the lie's a little bit flat, which is why it's more on the toe side. But it's not all on that front edge. But equally speaking, if you've got a lot of bounce on it, I'll do the same on this. We should see that mark move more towards the back. Okay. Although this will probably now go perfectly out of Can the you moment. imagine? <laughs> that probably would be just my luck. So one, this should now feel pretty short. I think it's a bit short as yeah. well. Um, it should feel quite short yeah, and quite short. light. And very light. <laughs> oh. So part of it is, I think part of the thing is not getting you, you stay in a posture where you can make a turn yeah. and the club just doesn't quite reach the bottom of the ball. Yeah. So that probably went left much I don't much think that, of a, that didn't, hit, yeah. didn't even hit it. <laughs> do one more there. And but, I'm trying and to get down right And that kind of shows more. quite interesting how where the, the other one we were testing was longer, pretty yeah. much at your pitch wedge length. And then that one you can just see having to stretch down and reach for it. <laughs> Make sure you bottom that on that one. Yeah. So interesting on that, I think the bigger problem is actually the length of it, because yeah. actually that's on the middle. The only problem with that is that when the turf gets firm, yeah. so if you're striking the centre bit there, as it works there through, it can kick off. Kick off, yeah. So something that is similar to here, but then gets the back edge out of the way. So we're going to show that on there. So actually for that, because Beth hits down on it, there is still... Oh, that one. Um, so actually the strike point's fine relative to the leading edge, but where it's contacting here, if that back bit doesn't then get out of the way, it then kicks up. So if there's not softness in the turf for it to go into, if you actually go down to get it, yeah. then that's then again, you get, you'll get that kind of ricochet off the turf. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to do one other shot with this one. So just one if... This is a bit of an odd surface to kind of picture the shot off here, but more like you'd play a bunker shot. A bunker shot? Yeah, it's a bit odd off there as a concept, but 
It'll just change. It, it may, it may not. But what, like this. More if like that's that. how you play it, yeah, yeah. I can't do bunker shots, so this is going to be interesting. Well, so if you open it up in bunkers, you're you're adding bounce to your current wedge, so that back edge is sitting lower and lower and lower. Okay. And the leading edge sitting up more and more off the sand. So that's probably where you might find that it just doesn't get into the sand. Maybe. And yeah. And kind that's of true. bounces out and tends to thin. Thin. Yeah. yeah. So definitely narrowing the sole a little bit and shallowing that back edge is going to make it much easier to get into the sand. Okay, let's see. Yeah, because again, technique-wise, you see you get down and under the ball. So that's moved it more to that back edge. Okay. So you think that's done it on this one, what yeah, it would yeah. do on your current one. Yeah. So and just move it back over to that. So because Beth opens the face up a little bit, that mark there, is that high enough? Yeah, that mark there is the second one. And then that's the first one. So where Beth plays a bunker shot, she opens the face a little bit, which presents that down. So you can do that with that one. And all of a sudden you've got a massive amount of bounce on that, which means that's especially you know, bunkers here with not a lot of sand, yeah. most of them. Yeah. That's just not getting into it. Yeah. So it's, it's doing everything it can to stop it getting into the sand okay. and basically kind of literally bouncing it off. Yeah. So going to a head that's not quite as wide, and even that one, we just want to do a little bit on the back edge. So where that ridges and drops off, just blend it a little bit, just smooth it off. So again, showing that piece. So where the ridge is there, just smooth that off. So it, again, it's just gonna let it sit in a little bit more, so you slide through a little bit more. Yeah. So fine tune, but um, I say these are generally designed mainly around the US, so just by blending that in, taking that hard edge off, it can just slide in a little bit more. Wow. So, so yeah, uh, and so as a wedge, these are, very good. I've gone to this one because partly there's a little bit of perimeter weighting. Yeah. So it's not a pure blade like all the other ones are. Um, partly we've got a bit of sole width to play with from a shaping point of view. Um, but it's also um, good in wet conditions as well. Which is needed. Well, not, not a comment on Wales, just to point that one out. <laughs> and Swansea um, in general. That's what it's like out there at the moment. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, you know, they've got a, the finished beads water off a little bit more. But ultimately, there are very, very few wages that have any element of forgiveness to them. They're just like, it's like putting a, you know, a, a complete, you know, muscle back blade in yeah. the bottom end where actually you've got some forgiveness on the irons. We might as well build in with the wedge. That's a, a, a lighter tab. It's really, it's quite soft. So it's um, designed just to affect sound, but also just lighter weight. So perimeter weights it a little bit more. So a little bit more like the rest of the set, a little bit of margin of error off yeah. center, but a good sole profile to give us a bit of versatility as well. Um, but heavier, longer. Longer, definitely. Longer, yeah. yeah. So Going of, back to that felt so weird then. It's just like... <laughs> yeah, you can see you, you, you end up just sort of stretching down to get it. But the problem is you'll then get back up to a neutral posture. That's rather why than, It's very hard to then get back down because when you're putting a little bit of rotation in, you're going to come back up to a level that your body's comfortable with. Naturally, so, yeah. Hence the thins with the sandwich. So, so effectively where your set is at the moment, it's sort of bookending it. The driver, I think there's there's potential for progression with it and give you yeah. something you can commit a bit more with. Um, the wedge, it's not as short, but you're giving you the weight to get the feel for those shots. Uh, and a head that's just going to be more versatile on different um, <laughs> conditions and lies and bunker shots. Um, but in the middle, the irons and the hybrids are good. And I think just use the lofted wood off a tee to lofted. generate a bit of confidence. Yeah. And then that, I think you know, the more that starts to be a club you're not concerned about, because um, it's not a technique thing, um, that's in a good place. I think just a bit of trust and the more you play, the better balance you're going to get, which is then going to get uh, your stay in posture more, which then means delivering the head more consistently, which yeah. then it's a bit of a snowball effect in that respect. Yeah. Um, but don't worry about the three wood. <laughs> I think there's not <laughs> enough, loft, about that one for there's a enough while. loft there to make it worth, yeah. worth having. You're going to be hitting the driver because it'll go further. Yeah. It's more forgiving off a tee. And if we bringing in a fair wood off the ground, then the extra loft on the five wood is going to be a better trajectory anyway. Yeah. So um, it's just not different enough in loft to the driver to hit off the ground and get that elevation of flight. Yeah. So 
The only other bit's the grip, which I'll have a look at. Okay. Now. Yeah. So you see your hand. So size always easy without the glove. So actually, yeah, you've got quite a long palm length. Okay. So shorter finger to palm length portion, but palm wow. length not far off mine. Yeah. So actually, your kind of wingspan that way is quite long, quite broad. So actually, for a lot of ladies, well, most ladies will have a bigger finger to palm length. Okay. Than most blokes have short fingers and bigger palms. So actually, you're a much longer palm length than a lot of ladies will. So potentially, grip size. Uh, I won't use the fairway wood. No. <laughs> so just take a grip of that as you would normally and we'll see. Okay, so top pan's good. So whilst there's a little bit, is that I'm not going to take a nail off the... No, um, no. Little finger gets round just round past the centre of the grip there. Now, once you get past the top, that clamps it in the, clamps it in the there. So I'm going to just display this on there. So once that finger gets around past the center, that then clamps it in there. So if you don't quite get there, the grip can flip out. Um, so it's key that that gets around. So top hand's absolutely fine. I mean, have a look at your bottom hand on there now as well. Okay, so this is weather going a bit bigger on this hand. Can you take your right hand off and put it back on? Yes, it's weather. If we go a bit bigger, it could mean not having to hold quite so tight. So where you have a, a longer length here, there's, mm. you've actually got more distance from the base of your thumb to the tip of your finger than a lot of people would. So okay. um, this is more about how the grip tapers down. So like for me onto this, it doesn't fill my finger out, my finger can hang off the grip. So I then have to clamp it down to stop it moving. Yeah. So if I get a grip that's, this will be a little bit bigger and this is more for the bottom hand sizing. So it's whether that, yeah, just fills that finger out a little bit more. So it means not having to close it. If you're having to close it, you're having to create pressure, which yeah. then loses a little bit of flow. Okay. So going back to that, should feel. Yeah, like you've got to. Yeah, it kind of, you, you have to actively close it rather yeah. than filling it out. So grip wise, they're absolutely fine, but we just need to add extra layers of tape in the bottom hand to, to reduce the tapering effect of it. Interesting. And so if you were less deep in your palm, yeah. then wouldn't need to do it. So, and it's just those but Because I've got of, a longer palm to Yeah, and your, your, quite, your, your hand kind of goes longer that way. So I've got less of a progression from little finger up to there, whereas you've got a bigger progression that way. So that's where your depth there means the bottom hand needs that little bit more scale to fit. So go back to the question earlier. It's about, for you, it's about size in the bottom hand, yep. top hand fits. This so, one. Um, grip type, the lambkins are very good. They've got quite a bit of tread. So there's quite a lot of purchase off them without being harsh. Yeah. So they did a grip with Michelin years back, um, which is where the tread pattern looks a bit like a tire tread. So they're oh, okay. quite a good all round grip. Um, but I'll grab a couple of others. Yeah. So it's, it's certainly possible to, um, and it would probably be worth doing all the way through if we're going to do it. Just we could probably, with the material lines, we could probably take them off and then retape and put them back on, or we can get some off and tailor made. Um, there's, I think, material wise. Uh, that. that. These are probably the ones, so that they're still a very good grip, the, the tailor-made, the um, Lankins. So you've got, actually, one of them's that material. Yeah. So that's more of a standard rubber. So slightly different texture. So that isn't rubber, different polymer. It's so a slightly kind of tackier, stickier feel. Yeah. Um, so and it's whether you feel, and we don't have to change the grip because they're a good all-round grip. I use a variant on this myself. Um, it's purely, this is purely tactile. Okay. It's whether feel-wise, whether you like the feel and the purchase off of that, or whether something from a different material, material. feels more comfortable. So this is probably more in your right hand, actually. Yeah. So, or it could, there also is the element of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I know, it's weird, isn't it? Now you use something more different. That's, that's again, slightly 
Okay. Tackier feel yeah. again, but without the ridging on it. I think I do prefer the feel of these than that. Yep. Yeah. Okay, we'll get that one out of the way. So it's probably, this one's more similar to that one, so. Yeah. It's whether the, so that's a, a smoother finish. And there's, I'll get a slightly fresher like one this. just from a material point of view. Whereas that's got, it's the same, it's slightly bigger, but that's the same material. And it's a fresh one. So there's a little bit more actual kind of grip, grip. a little bit of bite from the grip. Yeah, these feel, this one, I don't know if I like this one. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, yeah so it's, um, it's slightly different materials. And those ones, when it's warm, go really quite tacky. Okay. Um, they firm up a little bit when it's colder. So the lambkins will retain that kind of tread, tread. grip year round. Probably quite and different. it's you've got them on your current jobs already, know, so yeah. <laughs> it's less of a change. So it's just the sizing. The sizing. Yeah. Keep you I know. familiar. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Cool. No problem. <laughs> and I think final question on that. Yeah. Is whether on those the Tame logos on the top. Do you use? I use that? them. Okay. That's, we'll leave it on the top. Then. Yeah. <laughs> just for knowing where it sits, I do quite like it. Great. But yeah. There we go. Or don't say really through the others would just, I think probably we'll get some fresh grips from it. Get some fresh grips and then take them off, build them up, put some fresh grips back on. So they get that, um, that kind of same level of tackiness as that. Same as uh, that, yeah. And then slightly heavier driver shaft and a sandwich. Fabulous. Great stuff. Yeah. Thank it's been you really much. fun. Really enjoyed it's been it. So much fun. Um, I loved it. It's been very eye opening. Thanks for the questions coming in from everyone. Any, any follow-up questions, we'll get back to an answer and if there are questions for Beth, we'll fire them over to her. Yeah, that's fine. Um, nice. And do follow Beth on her Instagram. Your handle is? Beth's Golf. No, that's, yes. that's a tough one to remember. <laughs> that. Um, it, it's a, I think what's, it's a great, frank, honest, just this is golf and me and how me it and goes. Golf. So it's been a good, fun watch. And um, yeah, so any questions at all, let us know. Thank you for watching. Any other questions so far? No? Burner Mini, um, that is a mini driver. It's a very limited run. Um, so it's one of those ones we decided not to bring it in because we, there were no test heads. And by the time someone tested them, they'd have sold out. So we didn't bring them in. But essentially, if you're not a great driver of a ball and prefer three wood heads, then it's not a bad option to test out because you don't have to hit up on it as much as a driver head. Um, will be a decent head, but... Um, it, they're, they're just a very limited supply run, so yeah. Great, thank you very much thank indeed. Thank you so much. I hope you've had thanks fun. Thanks for having me. I've had been, loads been of fun. Great, and um, yeah, thanks for watching, and see you soon. Have a great weekend.